So really, consent items are heard at nine? That's what I thought. Yes, they are. So whenever you guys are ready. Interesting. OK. Well, we have a full boat, I think. Yep. OK, well, then I will call the Central Board of Architectural Review um, meeting to order. Do we have um, any members of the public who wish to address the board regarding an item that is not on today's agenda? Uh, Madam Chair, I have no request to speak. Haley, I'm going to go ahead and move you over in just a sec. OK, uh, agenda status report. Uh, Madam Chair, we do not have any changes to today's standard agenda. OK, the minutes of May 14th. And I'm assuming that per comments made last time, everybody's reviewed them. I have my notes. Nicole, would you like me to go over my notes first and then Everybody else can chime in if they have anything else to add. Uh, I'm sure, sure I've missed something. That's good. Okay, the first thing is the header has the wrong date. Tell me when you're ready for me to go on. Okay. Okay. Okay, item number one, comment number four. Um, do you want me to share my screen? No, I that's all right. I... Okay. Uh, comment number four, if the home were dropped down lower and nestle, it should be nestled. Okay. Um, number 10. Uh, provide. Go, oh, go ahead, Bethany. Sorry. Provide instead of a cross sections. Provide cross sections. Okay. At number eleven, uh, it says show envelope of height limit above the existing grade, as required. Um, and you can say per Hillside Ridgeline guidelines and okay. then semicolon document areas of structure as it graphically depict and document areas of structure that exceed the height limit graphically depict and document areas of the structure that mm -hmm. exceed height limit and then you could put item, comment number 13 right after that. OK. Puck, you had a comment? Yeah, it was just minor on, on number five. Um, it's just instead of making it and makes the okay. home appear larger than it is. Um, OK. 
Anybody else have any comments on the first item? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, this is Cass. I have a couple. Okay. Um, okay, one, one second, please. Sorry, just catching up and it has a weird formatting situation <laughs> that I have to fix. Okay, uh, number five, you said Cass? No, number four. Okay. Um, I would just suggest um, saying consider moving the home further back into the site. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. I meant on number four, consider dropping down lower to nestle in further. So you want that instead of the, if the home were dropped down lower and nestled in the design would improve, you want yeah, me to- I'm trying to suggest, suggest that they consider dropping it, you know, studying, looking, uh, dropping it down lower and nestling in further to help improve the, um, the mass, massing. Could, okay. Um, um, Cass? Yes. If, if we just took the, the current sentence and yes. said, consider comma if the home were dropped down lower and, and nestled in further the overall massing would improve may might improve be reduced would be reduced or yeah would be reduced excellent thank you takes a village did you get that nicole so I'm still not clear. Do you want me to delete the existing sentence? And no, no. It? We're we're just so if you start the the sent the current sentence with consider comma if the home were consider dropped, if the home were dropped down lower and nestled in further, then what? The the overall massing. would improve would be reduced okay. or would, would be reduced yeah would that's be reduced that. yeah. yeah okay thank you okay got thank it you. thank you for that help anybody else have any other comments on number one uh, well i had a, I'm, i still had a couple more wasn't finished that's why i asked please oh, let's sorry. be expeditious yes yes i am trying uh five um strike to say the long narrow building makes the home appear larger than it is. Okay. I agree with that. Okay. Then Nicole, tell me when you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. And just to be clear, yes. we're not making comments on the project. No. These are, are what we said. And I agree. Yeah. That's what we said. All right. Keep okay, going. Well, if you disagree with any of these comments that I have, please speak oh, up. Oh, I'll speak up. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> number nine. Number nine. Again, I just think it would be better if we just say consider studying. And I think promontory is spelled incorrectly. Yes. Yeah, there's an N in there. Okay. And then almost there. Um, number 10. I guess we, we, you guys, there was some changes to this already. I just wanted to make it clear that cross sections uh, through the site, including the road. Okay, that's a good thing to add. We did say that. That's it mm -hmm. says provide cross sections through the road and also sh show through the site, links. through the site, including the road. The road. Through the site, including the road. Yeah. Right. Got it. Yes. Okay. And then finally, um, did we uh, do? Is there anywhere that we should say something about that? Um, as proposed, this project is asking for a variance. No, they're asking for an exemption. Oh, I'm sorry. Exemption. Sorry. Yes. Um, I believe that you? it's covered in number that. one. Uh, perhaps it. 
Would it? Oh, I uh, see. Exception to Hillside Ridge Line. Yes, I got it. Bethany, should should it be exemption rather than exception, or does it matter? Oh, yeah, it should be. Well, Nicole, what do you think? I think you could use either term. Actually, okay. that's fine as long as it's it's clear. Why don't you just make that exemption, and then we're clear. Everybody knows what we're talking about. All right, um, are we done? Better. Okay, that was all I had. Thank you very much. Anybody else have any comments, Alan? Or I think it's Robin wasn't here, so she's staying mum. Nobody else has any comment. Okay, so on to number two. Um, let's see. Um, on number comment number three. Um, omit no issue with parking. Okay. Okay. And then where it says, would like to see greenhouse and windmill kept, as, uh, we can change that to retaining greenhouse and windmill structures. Mm -hmm. Is intrinsic to support of off-site parking. Now, does everybody agree with that? Because that's kind of what we said. Say it one more time, I'm sorry. So the comment becomes both plan A and B are acceptable. Are acceptable. Uh, retaining greenhouse and windmill structures is intrinsic to support of off-site parking. Because basically what they were doing was they said, we're keeping all of these nice old structures, but uh, we want to put our, our parking off site. And then they had this big, huge sweeping driveway and we talked about it and said, no, we want you to keep the greenhouse and the windmill. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a quid pro quo for the mm -hmm. yeah. park, support of the parking off site. Okay, so that's what I was trying to make clear. Uh, yeah, that, that's better. Thank you. That's good. Okay, so um, Bethany. Yeah. I, I'm just curious because I really can't remember. Um, I was sort of focused on the buildings. Did I, they're coming back for a preliminary. Are they bringing a landscape plan? Did we mention a landscape plan? Uh, we did talk about it, um, but they're really, they have so many issues with land use on the land use side. I right. Mean, you can add it in there. You can make a, um, um, uh, well, let me get my other comment in here real quick and then we'll sure. add that. Okay. So, uh, comment number two, support the idea, yada, yada. I'm going to change that to the board supports and then to just add it in front of that. Mm -hmm. Anybody to, pro to parking and circulation and then IE off-site agreement with you want me to say off-site parking agreement hold on with corresponding reduction on site and then grab uh, number four and slap it on the end of there Because all the parking then is in one place. And then if you can add somewhere in there, um, Pucks, because um, we did talk about landscape, but they had so much of everything else going on. To What do you want me to like add to, about? We'd like them to, um, once the site plan has settled down and they're returning for preliminary approval, basically, we'd like to see a landscape plan with it. Maybe just say... Um, when the applicant, um, when the project is submitted for preliminary approval, um, it will need a landscape plan. Just say, please include a landscape yeah. plan. There we go. Okay. Anybody right, else have ahead. any other comments on, on two? I, I have one on number four. Uh huh. I would just say um, include ADA and accessible parking as required. 
Okay, can you change that, Nicole? Mm -hmm. And it's new location at the end of two. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Obviously, no require uh, comments on three. Nobody else had any other comments on two. That's all I had. Okay. Uh, let's go to four. Um, on uh, comment number two, show any proposed landscape on sheet da 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 da, including if it is just hydro seeding, and then I'd add in response to grading work. And Got number it. three should start off with, um, hold on a second. <clears throat> Show topo lines on and then all site plans. Okay. Anybody else have anything on four? No. No. Okay. Five is a miss. Six. Um, on nine, item number one, uh, or comment number one, this is a very special place, and the board appreciates the direction. Uh, I, I would say the board appreciates the evolution of the design. Yeah. Okay. Two needs a question mark at the end. Three, consider a grander ER. Okay. And maybe say on. Oh, it doesn't matter. Never mind. Okay. So um, I'm the one who made the comment about the double posts, and this is not what I said. So as far as I'm concerned, it can be admitted. Um, but hold off on that until we get everybody else's comments. But I'd like to see it admitted or at least drastically amended mm -hmm. because the way they have their framing and everything else and the way they've got their cross beams, there's no real way to eliminate the double posts. I, I don't think this reflects what we said either. Yeah, well, that's why I was just going to say strike it. Does anybody have any well, problem? This with is that? on the railing on the patio. No, it was interior. Oh, really? No, no this com this this comment, as I wrote it, was meant to be reflecting. Remember, there's the railing, it, yes. the patio railing Correct. that was blocking the views. Correct. As you looked outside, so this wasn't meant to be on the interior. Uh, building itself well the so. comment i made was with regard to the ones on the inside uh -huh. and i was talking about it uh cluttering up the view um and i made the comment and this is not what I. oh said. i thought you were talking about the ones on the railing there but, was a lot of discussion about the railing and somebody right. else may have made a comment about the railing but as yeah. far as i'm concerned the railing can stay the way it is because it's reflecting that interior patternation and and that's what i said at the time so i i have nothing else to add to this except for i feel that should be struck if anybody else wants to change it to reflect a comment they may go right ahead Yes, I, I would say um, I recall that and I that that, uh, that you, Bethany, did speak about that on the interior. I remember that um, my comment, I made the comment about it from the exterior and it was meant to be just, a, you know, something to consider. It was not. Um, so what do you want me to write? Do you want me to strike it or change yeah. it? I would just say um, uh, consider um, study double posts um at railing exterior railing um for possible simplification okay got it okay yeah puck you're good i'm good alan i'm assuming alan's okay <laughs> not saying anything <laughs> okay 
Uh, number six, the comment on, uh, comment six, commend you for your commitment to native plants. It's a really unique ecosystem. Did they agree to remove the olives? This is a question for you guys. I don't remember. Uh, And it's not necessarily something that has to be, uh, I mean, the comment, I think, act actually captures what was said, and that's fine. I just had a question about the olives, because I think they were staying, weren't they? Um, yeah, I, I thought I think they were staying. Okay. All right. That was my question. Um, and number seven, provide all final details, including railing and provide a physical color board with samples as well as a photo of the color board and then please add for digital submission. Got it. And I have no further comments on this item. Anybody else? No. no. Okay, number seven. Um, I, I just like to clarify this. Um, we're, the actual comment was, um, I think I'd like to structure it, Nicole. So if we could say all plans should note, and then I'd like a colon or something that, that sets it off. Okay. Um, all colors and materials are to match existing. And then as a separate note, um, if this holds true for details, then the note should read all details to match existing. Um, I don't yes. know if we mentioned it, but um, any, um, however, any additional lighting should meet. Um, we did talk about lighting. Night sky requirements. Um, and uh, I thought they had. I, I don't. Because we did talk about it. Well, it won't hurt to have it, even if, you know. Yeah. Okay. So just add another bullet. Um, Got it. And and they have to have the fixture. Um, uh, we're yeah, and included in the plan set. I just don't want them to forget something that makes right them holds go them back. up. Right. Um, Got it. This to me. Uh, are we done with seven? Anybody else had anything else? Okay, I'm taking no's as acceptance. So let's go to eight. Um, this to me read as though we really didn't like it. And this is one of those, um, well, first of all, Augusta Street is needs a U, but um, this uh, also um, was, they came in and ran this by this. And I don't think at the time that they'd had a land use application, I don't think there was a planner assigned. Right. And and so to me, the comments without that context, the comments read is pretty much kind of like a slam. And, and so what I wanted to say was um, some, can we add a comment zero or something or a first comment that says comments are given um, without um, any land use review um, and then lead into, you know, please note, just because um, we didn't, we, we didn't have any planning feedback on how the form based code was working, or, or anything like that. And that so it kind of feeds into that. Okay, so why don't I add it to what? Yeah, that's fine. It's fine with me. Yeah. I don't have any other require uh, comments on this. So anybody else have a Anything to say? No. Nope. Does anybody have any other comments on the minutes in general? Just I move. Thank you. I move to approve the the um, minutes of May fourteenth um, with um, corrections and clarifications. Okay. okay. I'll second. That was Bethany. Any further discussion? All in favor? 
Aye. 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 Okay, and I think Robin. Yep, I heard Robin say abstain. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go back to the agenda. I think we are up to informational briefings. I don't have anything except for there is a um, joint chairs meeting that's coming up probably this month. Um, will probably be about, uh, well, I don't know what it's going to be about. Bethany? Um, yeah. This is Nicole. And I, you may likely not be the most appropriate person to ask this to, but I have mentioned it internally to staff as well. Um, I think if at some point um, it, it would be nice for Leah and I to perhaps attend one of the joint chairs meetings as staff. I just kind of want to put that bug in your ear if it comes up. I, I've mentioned it to my supervisor as well. Um, sure. But anyways, I just wanted to sort of mention that because I think there's there's ways that we could be helpful or we could be helpful in collecting or providing information at those meetings if, if, if uh, you know, you all felt comfortable with us attending. So I'll mention that to my supervisor again as well, but I thought I'd mention it to you. Okay. Um, anybody else? Any informational briefings? Did any of the information that uh, the people sent in gonna make it to that meeting, Bethany? Um, I can have Leah forward it to um, David. Uh, for inclusion on the agenda. Absolutely. Hey, but without a discussion, it's useless. Um, you're, you're referring to the, um, <clears throat> the uh, request for us to give uh, input and questions to the process. Yeah, that was supposed to, that we were trying to set up that brown bag lunch, and, right, and I, right. I don't believe everybody followed through with their. Uh, well, would it not be appropriate for us to meet and um, to, you know, look at what we do have? Uh, I know I sent in some um, in some questions, and I think others did as well. Why don't we work with whatever it is we have and see where we can get? And I, I'd also like to say I really appreciate um, staff and Nicole coming forward um, to, you know, help collaborate and, and it, together it takes all of us to uh, make our process better. Yeah, Bethany, everything that was submitted was in that document that I sent you. Um, gosh, it's Which I didn't open. Oh, okay. Uh, would you like me to resend it to you? I just copied. No, it. I don't. <laughs> I don't want to see it until it's part of an agenda. Well, it is on the agenda. No, it's not because it hasn't. That document hasn't been published. That document has to, for us to discuss it. It has just like a set of plans, Leah. That document needs to be collected, collated, and included as part of the submittal for uh for the agenda it needs to be post and it has to be something that the public can review we can't just launch into it with everybody nobody seeing it okay well is there something more that you need me to do or is just sending you that document well if we want to do the uh like a brown bag lunch then we can say we want to do a brown bag lunch and then when you put together the agenda you need to um, instead of having just a line item, it needs to actually reference what that document it is. And the, the document needs to be publicly available in, in box, just like all the project documents. And then anybody who's interested in that discussion wants to know what we're talking about. They have an opportunity to look and at least they'll have what the discussion points are going to be. Okay, well, what I'm asking is what, what more do you need from me? What can I do to further that along so that we can get everybody's comments collected? Well, um, I have a question. Yeah. Um, I, I think I was confused. I, I thought there was going to be a draft 
And then uh, to avoid a lot of duplication, I just, are, are, are we not allowed to see the draft as board members and then add? Well, it constitutes, technically it would constitute a decision. Oh, it would constitute the brown. Yep. Yeah. So you, okay. need, well, you need to not worry about duplication and submit all your thoughts. Uh, so I'll just, I'll send my thoughts this weekend because I, I thought it was kind of like a working yeah. document, but I realize now that if we all comment and oh yeah, well, it wouldn't work. So, okay. Go. <laughs> We're trying not to walk our own board here. Yeah, exactly. Okay, got it. Bethany, can I make a brief comment? Absolutely, Ellen. Could you also uh, please include a uh, line item um, uh, and ideas or thoughts uh, from board members uh, so that if somebody comes up with something new at that meeting, it can also be discussed. Very good. That's a nice catch. So, Leah, that was directed at you. Well, Bethany, okay. I was getting the impression that I was supposed to gather up all those comments. Send right, right. But did you just hear Alan's comment? I did, but I kind of need that list so that I can add that to that list. Well, I want you to add it to the list, but I want you to put it on the agenda. Okay, I, can, I need a summary of what we're gonna talk about so that I can actually make it an agenda item though. So I think our first step is to go through that list, take you out any policies and then put it on the agenda. You can do that. Cause I can't look at it. Cause once, once I look at it, uh, you know, I, I, we run the risk of me walking the board. So it can't be run by any of the board members. You guys have to pull it together, kind of do whatever you need to collate it and then put that. And then where you say where you've got the C bar discussion items, that's where you would put it. You would say, see this document and 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 so we'll be discussing those items, the, the contents of that document, as well as, as Alan just said any uh, further thoughts or uh, anything that's brought up during the discussion that pertains. Does that make sense? Yep, got it. I'll go through that document and- um, And, and Puck's gonna send you something and I will try and send something too. Okay. So, sorry, this is Nicole jumping in. Do yep. we wanna set a deadline for when those comments are due to Leah? from any members of the board who have not yet, is it just you and I Pat? think it needs to be three weeks before the next meeting. Well, actually Leah would, yeah. Cause that gives you Leah a week to get it into shape and put it on the agenda, right? Leah, you'll have mine on Monday. That's I, I was just confused about the process. Um, uh, chair, Madam chair, um, do, uh, can we, may I just ask, do you, can I get confirmation? You guys did receive the comments that I put in, correct? Can you? Yes, Cass, I did. Okay, perfect. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. And then, so ne next week is the deadline, basically, then? Yeah. First little, okay. And then I, you guys already know this, but I just want to since it's been a while, remind everyone that I, I did send out a link to our existing BAR application, which lists the items that are already technically required. Um, and I did that because a lot of the items that come up is applicants saying they didn't know they needed to submit something, even though it's listed right there on the application. And so when you're doing your suggestions, maybe take a look at that application and make sure that you're not suggesting something that we actually already are asking for, but that applicants are how, how about this, Leah? <laughs> yes. Can you include, uh, along with whatever your draft list of the comments and all that is, include in, under the same item um, a current CBAR application? You just want me to add it as an attachment or do you want yep. me to just add the link? I want you to add it as an attachment so that when we're talking about it, it's right there and we can all look at it and anybody else who's following along can look at it too. Yep. That sounds good. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. Good idea. All good ideas. Thank you guys.
Um, any recu recusals for any items today? Okay, uh, staff update. Okay, I just have a couple of things. So um, one thing that's coming up at the planning commission, um, sorry, I'm looking at it right now, um, is the, sorry, um, <laughs> it keeps, is um, in the Orcutt area, the Willow Creek project is coming up on June 30th. Um, and so that's coming up in, in the near future. And then the other thing I wanted to mention is at the planning commission this week, um, our director, Lisa Plowman, uh, mentioned a few things. Um, and I don't know if they pertain just to the planning commission um, or to other boards. So uh, that, that wasn't totally clarified, but I wanted to mention this and in case it does apply to the BAR. And um, Lisa had mentioned that they found that with some of the boards, it's been useful for certain board members to be able to join in remotely. And well, I mean, it's been necessary during COVID, but that they, I recognize that it would be probably useful in the long term for some members to be able to join in remotely if they're out of town or, you know, for various reasons. And so there is um, a lobbyist that, um, that the county works with and other counties work with that is trying to work with the state on the Brown Act requirements in order to hopefully allow some provisions for members to still as needed um, dial in remotely to meetings even after meetings go back in person um, because the way the Brown Act requirements are set up now is that if someone wants to join remotely, they actually have to notice the location of that individual, like whether they're at their house or whatever, and have it available for the public to go there. So I want to let you guys know that because there could ah. be some usefulness, you know, for when people are out of town or, you know, just, you know, for various reasons. So they're trying to pursue that, which could be a benefit. Um, and then I heard that the Board of Supervisors, um, when they come back in they have a little bit of a summer break. And then when they come back in August, they are going to be coming back in person. And I don't have a timeline for when, you know, other boards and commissions will be, but um, that's my update in on, on that. Thank you. Thanks, Nicole. Uh, back here. Um, so I think the next thing, because CBAR discussion items is an artifact there. It refers to that brown bag. So let's go to the consent agenda, Zaka Lake Lodge. Nicole, could you read our amended amendments? Yes, one second, let me navigate. And while document. we're doing that, if the applicant would like to um, go ahead and get ready for their presentation, Leah, if you could get that going while Nicole's reading so that we can get move on. Okay, Zaka Lake Lodge. This is a very special place and the board appreciates the evolution of the design. Suggest highlighting and making the entrance more prominent, perhaps wrap the entrance with stone. Consider a grander stairway in the interior. Consider one very large round window instead of four small ones. Current design is somewhat predictable. Consider restudying double posted at the exterior railing for possible simplification. Commend you for commitment to native plants. It is a really unique ecosystem. Provide all final details, including railing. Provide a physical color board with samples as well as a photo of the color board for digital submission. Landscape plan will need to show quantities and sizes for final approval. And that's the, the full minutes. Okay. Uh, applicant. Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Haley Kolosaiki with Suzanne Elledge Planning and Permitting Services. I'm gonna be filling in for Steve Welton today and just wanted to give you all a brief introduction to the project before I pass it over to the architect, Zoran Pevic. Um, so just wanted to remind you all that we were here last month on May 14th 
um, and received preliminary approval. So we're here before you today requesting final. Um, just as a reminder, this project was a fire rebuild. Um, the lodge burned down under previous ownership, was subsequently sold. Um, and this is a new design before you today. Um, so with that, Soren, would you like to go through the presentation and address the previous comments? Uh, yeah, can everybody hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, um, Matt Goff, um, the other uh, project architect on the job is uh, on as well in case uh, he wants to chime in. Um, so uh, the areas that uh, we revised, um, let me do a quick screen share. So what we turned in is um, the original landscape plan. We added a, um, sorry, my computer's freezing a little bit here. Um, we added a, uh, an area um, to show the um, number of plants um, uh, for each individual um, plant that we, we've chosen for this project. So um, they're listed on the right-hand side um, and uh, um, it's, uh, it's obvious, you know, based on the symbols of um, the landscape plan to um, uh, this legend down below. Um, so we added that. Um, all the details on, are on the architectural plans. Um, they uh, start here. Um, and this is A4.1 with the roof eave, um, the projections of uh, the four by, or I, I believe they're eight by rafters, uh, eight by 12s. Um, and then we added uh, more details here, um, which would be uh, where the, the log uh, veneer uh, meets the stone veneer, um, as well as the window heads and sill details. And then as well as the door jam um, and door head details. So um, all of that is included. Um, the one thing that I did notice um, for some weird reason was not added to the um, final submittal is, is um, the actual detail for um, this double post railing, which um, was supposed to be added to this page. But I guess when we made the PDF, uh, it, it didn't make its way on there. So um, what I can do is attach that. Um, it was really a um, portion of this uh, section of, of this uh, detail, which um, I can share. This is what it was supposed to look like. Um, so you can see the double post project out two inches above the three foot six inch um, railing. It is a cable railing with um, a steel top rail and a steel uh, baluster. Um, that holds the cables in place. Um, Quick so, question. Uh, yep. Is this part of the actual submitted set? This one detail did not make it on, but we can add it on. Okay, because I really hate to be a hard ass, but we're supposed to only look at anything you've submitted previously because we're bound to review drawings that um, are accessible to the public. Yeah, understood. Um, yeah, this is the one detail for some weird reason when we created the PDF, it, it wasn't added at the last minute. So. Um, okay, well, keep continue, but okay. we'll have to ignore that essentially. Okay. Um, it's just kind of a dimensioned version of um, what you see uh, here, which is. Um, okay, so this is what's included. This is what's included, correct. Okay. So this is the section detail. Of, Just um, carry on with that and we'll, we'll come back to you in a minute. Okay. So um, that, that's, that's this main railing along the, the lake side. Um, and that's pretty much all we needed to add. Um, it, the last thing was the material board, um, which was submitted, a hard copy was submitted to your office, as well as... Um, an actual physical sample of the um, better than logs concrete siding, which we chose 
um, the light brown version. So you can see the actual um, texture and, and um, color um, of the, the sample. Um, so that was dropped off at the office as well. Leah, do you want to show that on your screen? I believe it was also uploaded to the box. Um, yep. Give me just a second. Let me go ahead and start my video and I'll um, put it up again. Thank you. Give me just a sec. And as we discussed before, um, you know, the material palette, the, the local limestone rubble, um, it's from a quarry within the San Inez Valley. So really looking to utilize uh, local material pallets, um, the natural uh, standing seam roof, um, gravel for ground cover, and then the natural uh, flagstone um, that complements the um, local limestone rubble material. Um, and that would be used all throughout for uh, the flooring material. Can you guys see that okay? Yeah. So you everybody can, see, can everybody see uh, Leah's got her um, in her in the video portion. You can see her video cameras on. Can all the board members see that? Uh, I I'm seeing the uh, rendering from the um... right, but there's a there's a box that has shows uh, Haley's camera and it shows Leah's camera. Yes. Okay, it's in Leah's camera. She's showing you the actual physical sample. Oh, okay, there's proof. You might have to switch to standard view. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So okay. you can see the this, this sample. I know one of the commentary. Thanks, Leah. Com one of the commentary from the very beginning was um, that it was it was a bit light. Um, you could see the physical sample is is much darker. Um, and um, it, it will complement um, the existing um, wood log that exists specifically at the barn. Um, it's pretty much the same exact color. And um, that's, that is pretty much the only additions that we have. Um, everything else remains the same. Um, and if you have any questions, just uh, let us know. Bethany, I have a couple of questions when you're ready. Buck, go ahead. Um, I just had a few questions. The, the limestone rubble, is that also referred to in the vernacular as B-rock? I'm just curious. Um, I'm, I'm unfamiliar with um, that term. Um, the rubble is essentially um, no more than two and a half inches thick. Um, and then it ranges in sizes. We just use a thicker mortar um, and it makes it look like a more old world application to a stone wall um, rather than a five point um, like sandstone, which is, is a little more typical in, in Santa Barbara. Um, yeah. we, no, we wanted... I, I, I like it. I just um, was wondering if it was the quarry on um, Highway 154. It is, yes. Okay. Yeah, that's called B rock. Oh yeah, that 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 is the quarry. Yeah, B rock quarry. Yeah, so, yeah. sorry about that. Yeah, okay. that's correct. No, no worries. I think I think actually this is the first application of that material that I actually like. So um, <laughs> thank you for using it so inventively. Um, and then the second question: the the log material. There was one drawing. How how long are these? Like what what is the length before there's a break to the next log so we did receive um a lot of material from the manufacturer um i can uh, look this up real quickly but i believe they were 24 foot lengths um, oh, okay. so um yeah, they're all, they come prefabricated. Um, they are, they can be cut to size on site. And then 
around the detail uh, around the windows um they come with a casing detail that that matches the exact um color and grain of the log material um so you know it's a it's a perfect match um all prefabricated comes to the site and then we just assemble okay because i i think with these prefabricated materials um just like faux stone um the the application it either looks like sort of fake wallpaper or or can look incredibly realistic if it's applied with um sort of care to the patterning of it so i um and then last but not least could you go back to the landscape plan um the the trees i'm and and this is just a because you're in such a high fire zone. Um, what is the diameter of those oak trees that you're showing in the parking area by the building or the entry? Um, so there, there are these trees, which are oh, all of olive right. trees. Um, oh, those are olive trees, okay. They're, they're 48 inch boxes. So we're looking at, you know, a a pretty substantial size. Um, but I mean, ultimately they'll be, um, say 20, they could be 20 feet in diameter. I, I was just concerned um, the fire department um, is becoming more and more adamant about um, large trees within close proximity of, of structures. So, I, I just um, was kind of wondering about those, but um, you can cross that bridge when you come to it, if it comes up. Yeah, I mean, and that's partly why we chose an olive because it can be uh, manicured um, in a particular I, way that- I'd like to not get deep into discussions right now because okay. we're just trying to get through the questions real quick. Right, that was my question. That was my question. Yeah, right. and, and you guys, this is a consent item. It's not I, a comment it is. item. Right. So anybody else, anything? Can we go to public comment and, or? Uh, Madam Chair, can I just ask one very quick question? Um, it, it, are there, uh, uh, back to this, um, the material of the, um, the logs, the concrete logs, it, it sounds like um, it was 24 foot lengths. Are there any seams? Yes, um, there would be seams and what we would try to do is is line it up in a particular way that, um, you know, matches with uh, the, the openings. Um, so windows, um, uh, we, we try to, you know, make it work in accordance to um, the way all the openings are lining up. Okay. Thank Any you. more questions? No. All right. Do we have any public comment, Leah? Uh, we do not. I do have um, Matt. Matt, are you part of the applicant team or did you have a public comment? I'm part of the applicant team. Oh, okay. Uh, I just had a comment about the end-to-end um, -end condition of the Better Than Logs product. They do also make um, various trim pieces, whether they're kind of two by type material. They even make round trim uh, for the round windows. And I think the product is designed to, to be able to be set end to end as far as the grain pattern goes. But if we run into a scenario where we need to um, deal with some sort of incongruous end to end grain condition, we can use a piece of the kind of to buy or larger member uh, um, trim to, to be kind of a vertical break that's strategically placed around the building. So it'll, it'll look right uh, either way. All right, uh, does the applicant conclude your presentation? Are you guys finished or? Uh, yes, we are. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right. Um, I have a, uh, a couple of um, issues and Nicole, this is a question directly for you. 
One of the um, notes from last time was the landscape plan will need to show quantities and sizes for final approval. While the on the view the applicant showed us, it does list the sizes. It does not number the quantities. And, and I'll just note that um, I'll just note that the um, the version that we have in box is illegible. So um, I would not have been able on my screen to determine uh, either the legibility of this. And this is something else I'd like to take up with digital submittals, but that's a, a question for another time. But we're missing the quantities. Um, we're missing the detail as the applicant noted regarding the um, railing. And um, as well, if the applicant will scroll down to, it is sheet AS, Thomas Jacob Flitch. So Bethany, they were just highlighting on the screen that they do have the quantities listed. Oh, they do. Thank you. I couldn't read them. Okay. So that so one's off. So at we're least. missing okay. a detail. That one's off, right? We got it. Um, too far. Uh, it's sheet number 16 in the set. Or, yep, right there. Zoom out a little bit. There you go. That's exactly what I'm talking about. You have two landscape plans. Yeah, this, this was from the original architect. Um, he's supposed to modify his to reflect ours. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know why um, he added this one. Do you need this sheet? Can uh, no, we we could remove this sheet altogether. Okay, Nicole, can you please note that this sheet is being removed from the approved set? Uh, what what sheet number is it again? It doesn't really have a number. It just it's, says AS. It's it's in this document. It's sheet sixteen. It's page sixteen in the document that was submitted. It also has no numerous duplications of text, one on top of the other. <laughs> yeah, I think this was a mistake. Um, okay. Um, and then we have the detail. Um, um, can we stipulate that um, the planner will review uh, the additional information for the detail and um, if they have any questions? Or they'll review it for conformance so that basically, you know, it's calling out the same things that are elsewhere located on the drawing. I think those materials are identified and should be congruent with the materials board. Okay. I don't see that detail as holding up our final action. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Those are my only comments. Um, yeah, and we actually can't have comments on this one. Um, well, so I'm just making only... that a part of the action. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Would you would you want to read that back as a motion for me? Um, final approval granted with sheet. Uh, sh final approval granted with the following conditions: sheet AS uh, with the secondary landscape plan to be removed. Planner to confirm receipt of dimension detail for porch railing and conformance with the rest of the plans. Okay, I'm not sure that planner okay, will understand what that uh, means. Well, okay, then then uh, I would say that they're to, the the planner is to confirm that the submitted de railing detail um, is is matching dimensions, etc., of uh, and materials callouts per the rest of the plan set. So basically. If, if they get this submitted and now all of a sudden the post is called out as wood, 
and it's a six by six post instead of whatever it is the applicant's been showing us all along, which is metal, I believe, you know, kind of rings a bell. I want them to look at it and make sure that it's consistent okay. with the plan set. Okay. Okay. And if they have a question, they can contact me okay, to take it. a look at it and, and make sure that that is, yes, in conformance with the drawings. Got it. Okay. And I would add also that, uh, no, that's good. All right. I would so move. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you, Alan. Any further discussion? No. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Wonderful. Let's get this meeting going. Item number one, 20 bar eight, Young America's Foundation, new single family dwelling. Um, do we have a applicant? Good morning, Bethany. Alan McLeod with AP. Hi, Alan. Video. All right. Um, and, and I've got, uh, I got Chantal Vo from, uh, Perry I um, landscape architecture firm, and I also have Lauren and from my office on okay. as well. So, um, uh, Nicole, can you do you have the comments in front of you from last time, or would you do you need me to read them? I have them. Could you um, read them into the record, and then okay. we'll let Alan go ahead with his presentation. And Leah, right. can you get Alan set up while we're waiting, and uh, then we'll rock and roll. All right. Uh, like the rural nomenclature of the design fits the site well. Structures and forms within the development envelope appear to be well cited. Appreciate the style of architecture. Interested to see the development of the materials palette and lighting. Would like to see more information regarding the landscape at a minimum, how it addresses the interface between wildland areas and the development envelope. As you progress, we would like to see the formal landscape proposal um, including water use calculations, identify what is and is not tree canopy, keep fuel clearance requirements in mind, and show height calculations on plants. Return for, for the conceptual and preliminary. That's it. Thank you. Mr. McLeod, take it away. Um, do you guys have the drawings up or do you need us to pull them up? Uh, that's why I was asking Leah to get everything set up and running. <laughs> Because hey, yeah, the ability to share your screen whenever you're ready. Thank you. Um, real quick, Madam Chair and Board Members, this is Tina Mitchell, planner for the project. Can I just Hi, add in a, a quick absolutely comment? go for it? Sorry, I didn't mean to ignore you. No, it's no problem. Um, so before they begin, I just wanted to make a minor correction to the agenda description. Um, the agenda states that the project will require approximately 360 cubic yards of cut and 330 cubic yards of fill. And the current estimated quantities have changed slightly to 180 cubic yards of cut and 360 cubic yards of fill. So I just wanted to state that for the record. And that was my only comment. So I'll leave it to Alan. Okay, um, well, we got those drawings up yet. Do you need us to do the drawings? Yeah, typically, Alan, that's that's the procedure. Oh, okay, because SBAR does it differently. So that's fine, we'll pull them up. Thank you. Can they give, um, Laura, can you give Lauren access? There's yep. nowhere that states that we have to do the drawings, by the way, in any of the emails. All right, Lauren, you should be good to go. <clears throat> Thanks, guys. <clears throat> okay, so we um, were with, uh, we reviewed this project uh, February last year. So I'll just reorientate you. We're at the top of Refugio Road. 
Uh, we're a 90 a 92 acre property on the southern side of the just down the southern side of the ridge uh, right at the top of refugio road so um, we have a, a existing uh, driveway that comes down to an existing uh, flat location um, what's happened since last time we met is um, we've we've um, gone through a full review of biological constraints and we've we didn't move the main house or the guest house, but we have relocated the two barn structures and we'll see this um, on the next sheet. I'm sorry, existing site photos. So um, we, we were dealing for the part of why we've taken so long to get back is we've just been dealing with how do we just massage the buildings around. Um, you can see the two northerly gray boxes. They've swapped locations and one of them um, has moved up the driveway slightly so that we can um, accommodate the biolo biological resources from the, uh, the intermittent stream that we have to the uh, west of the property. Go to the next slide. Just an enlargement of the site plan. So what we have is a, a proposed main uh, single family residence, a proposed guest house, which were in the same locations in the same configuration as last time we met. And then we have um, a large butler building, um, agrarian structure, and then we also have a port in place concrete uh, barn as well. So next slide. Um, looking at the floor plan for the main house, it's a 2,000 square foot home, very simple three bedroom um, structure with a, a, a open style family living. It's a single uh, form with a pitched roof, which you can see in the elevations. We have a, a large overhang um, shade structure around the southern and eastern side of the, um, the house to provide shading from the sun um, and weather. And then on the right hand side, we can see um, our lighting strategy, which is a, a small delta fixtures that are located um, and we always mount them low to the ground. So they provide what we required for life safety, but we don't have any um, large lamping that's high on the building. So we keep all our lighting very low. The, the proposed structure is um, uh, exists a cedar, a rough sawn or smooth sawn cedar. Um, that's going to be um, allowed to go gray. And then we have a, a dark corrugated roof. And we'll go to the next slide. So that's the main house, the, the guest house strategy. So the guest house is a little two bedroom guest house with bathroom and a, a little dining area. Same strategy with the material palette. Um, metal roof, um, cedar siding, and we'll let that go gray. If we go to the next one. So the, the Butler building is truly, a, it's for storage of um, tractors and farm equipment. So we've gone with a very basic Butler building structure. It's a, a single, sh, uh, single sh pitched roof. Um, and then it has a couple of um, barn sliding uh, openings, and then this will be a full metal building. <clears throat> Next slide. Um, and then we have um, the concrete structure. The, the idea with this is to kind of mirror the house, but do it in concrete. So we're proposing to do a board formed um, vertical uh, concrete um, walls and roof. And then um, doors will be in the uh, rough stone cedar uh, left to go gray as kind of a, uh, an opposite or a mirror image of the main structure. Uh, we've got a few of our details starting to get prepared with window and door details. So what we've gone ahead and done is uh, from a lighting strategy, we've rendered out the, the house and then we've done uh, night shots for you as well. So we can have a look at the, the uh, light spill, which is very minimal on this uh, main house. Uh, from the opposite side, looking west of the guest house and main house together. And then we did one from the entry court. So this is a shot coming in through past the concrete structure to the main house and past the barn. And then a, an evening, late evening, uh, early night shot of the lighting strategy just for the, for the courtyard, which is very minimal. 
Okay. And then from a landscape standpoint, I'm going to pass it over to Chantal. Hi. Um, so, yes, I'll present the landscape uh, plan. Uh, Laura, can you go to the next? So here we are, um, just kind of co connecting with the minimalistic architecture that Alan had uh, mentioned. We wanted to keep the plan palette really simple and bring in just some color um, with like the simple color palette that we have for the architecture. Um, so here in the main entry uh, coming in, we wanted to do some nice olive trees to create a nice entry. Um, and under the olive trees, we just have some meadow grasses with some accent agaves, so very simple. Um, along and kind of in front of the buildings, it's, very, it's all kind of cohesive with each other. We have um, uh, accent agaves and cacti and grasses, so they're trying to keep it really simple. Um, the whole driveway is gravel, and within the planting areas, we have, um, as you see at the bottom of the screen, we have two different gravel types. The driveway would be real flat gravel, and then the accent gravel, that would be where the planting areas are, is a little bit darker, which is a blue field stone. So it kind of um, creates a nice kind of accent for the plantings and also the separation between the gravel and the planting. Um, we also have some olive trees along the main um, single family residence. They kind of give it some and then um, let's see and then as it goes up towards the surrounding natural or surrounding existing vegetation we have added in some uh, hydro seed for native grasses and uh, yeah native grasses and some wildflowers and so yeah so that's um, pretty much it just keeping it simple with the very minimal plant palette planting details and to go into our water calculations as you had asked for um, the water efficient landscape worksheet is right here and we are below but we are in the lab so that's the number and this is the irrigation plan as well so Okay, so that's what we got. Okay, so that concludes your presentation, Alan. Yeah, thank you. Um, Chantal, could you zoom in on your plant palette? Because while you know what it is, what you guys were looking at, um, you know, we're seeing it on a smaller screen with not the ability to zoom in, so. Thank you. Could you go ju out just a little bit so we can see it? Up? There we go. Hey, Bethany, are you getting that yeah. feedback? Uh, yeah, it sounds like um, Ms. Vo is in an airport. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> a a very windy have... tunnel. <laughs> oh, sorry, we, we sorry. did hear it, but it's, there's a lot of feedback coming through your, your, your um, headset, I think. Yep. Try not to plug in and plug in again. Have this. No, that's still bad. Anyway, let's keep going. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad I wasn't the only one to notice. <laughs> okay. Can you scroll up? Give us a look at those trees for you real quick. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. Um, so, um, Leah, do we have any public comment or any questions? While you check on public comment, um, any questions from the board members? I have no questions. Okay, that was mine. Only one was the plant palette. So anybody else? Um, I, I had a couple questions. Okay. Um, uh, I was just wondering if maybe you could talk a little bit about, I noticed on the north elevation of the, of the main house, um, uh, there are no windows along that side. I was just wondering if you could speak to that. And, and also my other question 
Well, what do you want to do that first, and then I'll ask one other question. Yeah. So I, I, I the the idea. Cass, was go ahead and get both questions out there, please. I'd I'd like Alan to be succinct, and then I want to go on to public comment and bring it back to the board for true discussion. Sorry, Alan. Yeah, no worries. Okay. Well, that was one question, and then the second question was if we could look at the uh, courtyard with the concrete. Um, I think that's uh, a, a board and bat concrete. I think believe it serves sort of on the right in yes. that courtyard uh, uh, vignette that you have. I was just curious um, about the, um, you, you know, you, you have no overhangs and I was just wondering about shading and how, what you were thinking about that. And um, just like you to speak to that issue as well, if you could. Okay. Thanks. so. Um, when the, the whole idea of the of the entry courtyard is to have it actually be very very quiet, um, and I didn't want to actually be looking back um, north. I want to keep the focus um, to the south. So the original courtyard for the house, um, again, like I said, very quiet, no openings, and part of it is that the all the, all the visuals are to the west and to the south. And, and um, we really wanted to focus the energy of the home to that portion and not on the more utilitarian side of the house. Um, so that was item number one. Item number two, yeah, there are no eaves, no overhangs on the concrete structure. Um, we wanted these to be very clean uh, forms, but agrarian in their, in their form. So very uh, rural um, shaped, but stripped back to its absolute basic form was the driving car was the was the driving idea that's why the the main house is a very simple gable that's just a single lineal long gable and um the guest house is made up of a of broken down the massing of that into two smaller gables but it's it's linked via the the walkway thank you thank you alan uh any other questions from the board Okay, so what I'd like to do is um, go ahead and Leah, I hope you've been on the spot with the public comment there. Yep, Madam Chair, we have no request to speak. All right, perfect. So uh, I'd like to open it up for deliberation of the board. Who wants to go first? Sure, I'll go first. Okay, Cass, hit it. Okay. Um, I, um, there's a lot of things about this I really like. Um, I, I like the, the, this courtyard shot we're looking at, I think it's really nice. Um, I, I especially like the porch on the main house where it's going, you know, running across the full, um, the full length of the house. Um, I think that's not only, not only very um, attractive and lovely, but also extremely practical. Um, so I really like that. I like the simple forms. Um, I, I like the arrangement of the buildings also. Um, my, my concern is, um, as I said, is uh, just about um, the, um, the climate and uh, you know, shading devices. I, I, I think it might be um, improved perhaps to have some sort of a shading structure, straight, a shading element. Um, on this concrete building we're seeing on the right-hand side. I think that could be integrated in. It could be a separate canopy kind of thing out of steel or, or whatever that you felt was appropriate for your project. But I think that the, um, and then also the natural ventilation that, um, you know, perhaps some windows up high, small windows up high on the north side of the main house could possibly be a really nice way of capturing views from inside and also keeping it very simple for the, the your design intent. But um, I think it's a nice project. So those are just some comments I offer for you to consider moving forward. Thank you. Buck? I don't have any further comments. I, I think it's a, a nice project, but I do, do agree with um, Maybe some concerns for shade. It does does get pretty warm up there sometimes. That's it. Okay. Um, Robin. 
Um, I agree with Cass and Puck. And I think the courtyard really lends itself to the winds that are up there. And I think that'll work well. I like the project. Okay, Alan. I have no further comments. All right. Um, uh, I don't either. Um, I would say that there's um, that uh, other comments about uh, the heat and shade and so on and so forth um, seem to merit some further study. And I think that's really the only thing that's gone through. Um, I would say that it looks like you have really worked uh, with the comments from last time, as well as your um, process, your design process, as you move through the rest of um, land use clearances and with the biologics and so on and so forth that you alluded to in your um, presentation. Um, I would like to, um, with that in mind, I'd like to go ahead and uh, make a motion for preliminary approval. Is there a second? Oh, second. I'll second. That was Cass. Uh, any further discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 I think that was all of us. Uh, any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, Thanks thank so you much. very much folks. Have a great day. You too. Okay, so I think we're, um, I, I'm on, I think I'm on the right, yes, okay. Uh, I had to make sure I had the right document in front of me. Uh, item number two, 20 bar 33, Los Alamos Farm Motel. Um, and I think this is here for the first time, is that correct? We're item number two on the agenda or on the minutes that you reviewed this morning. Okay, so we do have some previous comments from last time. Um, could we... Um, I'm ready to read those. Perfect, Nicole, thank All you right. so much. <laughs> okay, and while so, she's doing that, if, if Leah, if you folks can get ready, we're sharing your screen will be great. Go ahead and hit it. Perfect, Okay. Thanks, so um, comment one, wonderful project, fascinating and exciting, a very noble right. undertaking. The board supports the idea of innovative approaches to parking and circulation, i.e. offsite agreement with corresponding reduction on site. Remember to include ADA and accessible parking. Both plan A and plan B are acceptable. Retaining greenhouse and windmill structures is intrinsic to support of offsite parking. Mark plans to include notations on the elevation that colors and materials are to match existing. Please include a landscape plan. And that's all the comments. And it says return for preliminary. Uh, Madam Chair. Sorry, I had my mic off. Yes. Sorry. Um, I, I'm not sure those were the minutes that we reflected the changes. Um, the, because there was a comment that I had had about the uh, uh, ADA parking. I just, I just read that. She read Remember it. to include ADA and in accessible parking. OK. Thank you. Yep, she got it. Got it, thank you. Okay, um, would the applicant please progress with their um, presentation? And I'll just remind you, uh, as I haven't been doing, um, you're limited to the plan set that was submitted. Yes. Thank you. I understand. Thank sure. you board. Sorry, this is Eric Gomez, a uh, planner on this project. Um, I just wanted to give you a quick update. Um, sure, Eric just because there seems to be some back and forth on the minutes and I wanna make sure we're clear where we're at with this project. Um, at the last meeting, um, basically we were still working through some of the land use issues and the, uh, the, the applicants shared that, um, you know, that what they were showing at that time with the parking and with some of the stuff offsite, it was, or offsite wasn't their uh, ideal situation to have. Um, so we're still working through some of these issues in particular, our, our priority right now is getting through um, uh you're, you're getting an exception from public works if possible from um for the driveway and the uh, frontage improvement standards that that they uh generally place on these kinds of projects um but that's why you're seeing it here for conceptual review again they're bringing their their ideal situation forward um but it's not quite getting clearance from land use yet uh for 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 uh preliminary if that makes sense 
Yes. Perfect. Okay. I just it wanted... does make sense. Thank you for that clarification as to what we're looking at and why. Great. Okay. Are we ready? <clears throat> we are. Great. Uh, so I'm not going to go through everything again. I think this was very recent and hopefully everyone remembers kind of the gist of the project. I'd like to talk about the changes and then our, um, our kind of pie in the sky dream of, you know, what we really want. Um, so we still have the three historic structures that we plan on moving to the site. We, I, I show on this plan now the, um, alleged required setbacks, which are still somewhat unknown, um, but this is what we think it's supposed to be. A 12 in this, which we're calling the front, 10 on this front, which is also a side. Uh, so we moved the pool out of the setback uh, and we removed the giant, the parking lot, um, the, the proposed giant parking lot. We put the windmill back, uh, which we do really want. We, we have not been able to find a place for the greenhouse because um, not parking, but ADA. So this is basically our dream plan that meets, that could meet ADA requirements. This isn't our dream plan period, but ADA is not going to be waived under any circumstances. So what we've created is a, a drive-through vehicle loading, unloading uh, space. And what you see here on this drawing is currently not allowed. I'll explain why. Um, but this would have to be a concrete pad. And uh, we would have to have concrete walks somehow from this pad to one of these two uh, historic structures, which uh, would need to have uh, ADA ramp, et cetera, going up, going up to it um, to meet their requirements as I understand them. Uh, we're okay with, with all of that, but it does eliminate the space for the, um, for the greenhouse. So this, this idea uh, doesn't, would not be allowed because we're too close to this intersection. Uh, the requirement, as I understand it, is that we have to be at least 200 feet, that the driveway entrance has to be at least 200 feet away from an intersection, which is uh, physically obviously impossible because our lot is only 100 by 100. Um, so we're, we're asking for whatever term, um, some kind of waiver or something to, to be allowed to have these driveways there. Um, and I just want to note that, uh, our driveway is directly across the street from another existing driveway. Um, and then the other, the other, uh, addition or change, uh, is that we're, we're starting the process working with an engineer um, to determine the size, shape, and depth of this gravel drainage basin because um, our lot slopes a foot from this, this corner back to this corner. So all of this uh, water will go back into this area and needs a place to, to drain. Uh, I also want to mention there, there's there been some conversations about, well, what are your proposed materials? What are your proposed landscape plans? You know, what are your proposed this and that? And I, I want to be clear that we don't want to propose anything as far as changes. Um, like I said in our last uh, presentation, we're historic preservationists. So we're proposing to restore these buildings uh, and all of the material is there and all of the evidence is there on these structures. Um, so we're not going to be proposing, you know, this is going to be our stucco color and this is going to be our new asphalt shingle and all of that because we don't want any of that. Um, we want to bring them back to their 
original. And regarding landscaping, we also don't really want like a suburban kind of landscape. I understand that you want to know, you know, plants and irrigation, et cetera. We don't really want irrigation. We'd like this to be just the natural, whatever grows naturally, the natural grass. Um, we do want to add a few trees, which are uh, shown on this plan. Um, and I suppose we need to consult with a landscaper about whether or not those trees need to be irrigated or if they just need to be watered to get them going. Uh, but they are all, to my understanding, native species. So we will cross that bridge as we come to it. Um, so yeah, I think that's about it. I mean, we're interested in feedback, comments, some suggestions. Where do we go from here? Okay. Um, did you wish to show us the rest of the plan set? I mean, you got two other sheets here. Uh, yeah, it's not really that interesting. Um, it's the topo just basically showing that there's a one okay. foot difference and then the, um, the elevations of what these structures look like. Um, but the photo set that we included, I think is a better representation of the existing structures than looking at the line drawing. So I can okay. pull that up if, if, I mean, we looked at it last time, but if somebody wants to look at it again, I can Well, you have, you have someone who was not uh, here for oh, that. Oh, okay. So let me, I didn't realize that. Let me pull that up. Unless you have it handy, Mark. I had to dig it up too. It'll just take me a second. Uh, let's see. Am I sharing my window or my screen? Do I need to share a new window? Or are you seeing your screen? Whatever shows up on your screen should be up there. Okay, good. Uh, I think they're in here. Yes. So this is the, um, the, the most important structure, the uh, 1880s Cunane Homestead, which is also referred to as the Numancia House. Um, for the other board member that wasn't here last time, this structure is currently on the Chumash Indian uh, Reservation and they want So to... we're still looking at the elevations. So wherever your elevations are on your screen, that's where so you need I'm to put those photos. I'm my window and not my screen. Okay, there you go. Um, let me see if I can redo this. How about now? Yes. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, Kunane Homestead, Chumash Indian Reservation. Uh, they want to tear it down. We want to move it and restore it. This is the front elevation. And uh, let's see. Can I scroll? No. The rear. And uh, the uh, side elevation. So I would say that that's it for now. OK, thank you very much. Uh -huh. um, are there any um, quick questions from the board? Um, before we go to public comment and return for discussion. I have no questions. Um, I do have some questions. Okay. Um, 
uh, and please uh, pardon me if I missed something from last time. I, I do apologize if I am asking something that was um, has been said before. But um, these these are these uh, old historic structures that you are moving onto the site. And then they will be completely restored um, to be used in the way uh, that you're illustrating here in the plans. So will this be a um, uh, like a hotel or like a, a, a um, it, it would the the um, planners are calling it a motel. The, yeah, the use is a motel because they have exterior, the rooms have exterior entrances. So that, under that, a definition, that, that's, great. that's okay. good. Thank you. A motel. Right. So then my question is, um, how are you um, achieving? Um, uh, are you are you going to be putting in handicap ramps to be able to get in there? And if you're providing for yes. um, ADA into the houses? Yes. Just one. Uh, we ADA only requires that one room be ADA accessible. Okay. Um, so and then that probably is shown on here somewhere. The the ramp. He, he indicated that they were going to pick from one of two units, Cass. Right. Okay. And then they'll then they will design a ramp getting into that one. When Correct. They decided which one it is. Correct. Yeah, I need to get more information um, sure. about all of the ADA requirements. Okay. Does that answer uh, your question, Cass? But yes, we are going to be designing a ramp, most likely coming into this this middle unit, and the ramp will most likely be, if you can see my cursor, uh, right in this area. Okay, great. I just, you know, sorry, I'm just trying That's to get okay. the picture of things. So, yeah. uh, and That's then of fine. course all of the uh you know the windows and doors you're going to be putting in to um and and we'll see more information on that as you as you work through they would all be restoration um but if you are interested in seeing all of the windows and doors we can take pictures of all of the old windows and doors and show you those uh, but they would be we'll restored. we'll talk about that when we get to discussion yeah, right thank you i think that those are my questions right now Okay, any other questions? All right, um, Leah, public comment? Uh, no request to speak. Okay, Puck, you wanna start us off? Sure. Um, Thank you. Um, given um, where this is located, I just wanna say that I, I support the, the ingress, egress issue, even though this is a, com, a commercial property, um, the type of traffic is um, much more residential, I think. And um, living in Los Olivos, there, there are many driveways that uh, do not meet that standard. And um, so I would, support that as, as far as the overall um, site development. I just wanted to make, um, and also I, I think in a way it's, there, there's so many challenges about the site development, but I also think it's a very intriguing challenge and look forward to see how all of this really comes together because obviously it's clearly illustrated on this plan. There's so many disparate kind of um, circulation elements that need to be unified and uh -huh. um, it'll be interesting to see how that happens. I did want to make a comment though on the landscape. Um, I, I appreciate your um, sort of uh, historical philosophical intent. However, um, I was just on a site in Los Alamos that's been left to its own devices. And it's pretty much 100% foxtails, which are really annoying, horrible, in, you know, exotic grasses um, that were historically introduced into our landscape. Um, so I, I think um, with care, you can develop a landscape that gives provides the intent that you want, but also is realistic about 
people using this space, um, the need for irrigation because uh, plants, um, frankly, don't survive. Um, during our last drought, we lost many oak trees um, that you know were natives. So anyway, long story short, um, I think it will um, behoove you to en engage someone who understands your vision and can bring them to you in a creative way that, that works both functionally, aesthetically, and from a historical perspective. Those are my comments. Yes. Uh, okay, sure. Um, well, I, I really like, um, you know, being a historic buff myself. I, I, I love the idea of the concept of this project and that you're working with these wonderful old structures. I just, I really uh, appreciate that. Um, from a design point of view, I'm a little concerned uh, that you've got this small lot and you've got a heck of a lot of things going on there. I'm wondering if uh, you might consider a, a bit of simplification. Um, I think, you know, the, the most important thing is these structures and making them feel like they belong together on this site somehow. Uh, of course, in a way that's appropriate for the historical uh, representation. So um, I would just really, I, I know from my own experience, um, oftentimes, you know, just simplifying and maybe cutting out some things, uh, you could get more for less. So um, I, I would ask that you consider that as you're trying to uh, figure out how to uh, really make a, a beautiful arrangement of these structures and a functional use. Um, you know, to, for the circulation, I'm a little concerned about the circulation. I'd like the site to represent, uh, you know, that it should be have a historical uh, aspect to it as well. So um, I'll just, I, I appreciate the comments that, uh, that Puck just made and agree with all of those and uh, just would leave you with those comments from me. Thank so you. Cass, this is Nicole. On the simplification, is that specifically to the circulation throughout the site or also pertaining to other elements? I think other elements. I, I, I just see so many things on here. There, It, it feels a little bit um, uh, like it's- So what are, feel like what are some of the, could I list a few of those things? Well, I like maybe the fire pit, um, you know, or perhaps the windmill might be more appropriate in that corner where the fire pit- Cass? Yes. I think what's going to happen, I think if they talk to, um, he mentioned, the applicant mentioned that they, he thought it was about time that, that maybe they should consult with a landscape uh, designer, someone who does landscape. And I think um, a lot of these can be kind of uh, addressed as within the team with the landscape person and, and them as far as their vision. And I think Nicole, for the minutes, I think you could say that you should consult on, um, you know, kind of um, the site circulation, pedestrian circulation, identifying what areas are what planted versus hardscape, so on and so forth. And I think you leave it at that. Okay. Um, I think it might sort itself out. What do you think, Cass? Uh, I'll follow your lead. I, so that's right. I, I'm, I'm happy. Uh, Nicole was asking me if I had specific suggestions. Um, well, by all means, go I, ahead if you have specific suggestions. But I think that you're if you did were to sit here and make specific suggestions, I think that when they sit down, the team sits down and looks at the the the, you know, bringing everything together, connecting it all up, I think, uh, rather than saying lose this do that. I think it's not so much a question um, to me, and this is just semantics. It's not so much a question of simplification. I think it's just a question of consolidation and connecting everything together and figuring out what's their ADA path travel and how to incorporate that into the site and what areas are gonna be what paving. Um, yes, concrete is, is potential. 
but uh, and obviously pea gravel is not going to work for your path of travel. And how do you incorporate that into the design? So there's a lot of little things that I think are going to all go into this big melting pot and get reduced out. And what's going to come out is um, a holistic design where what Cass is talking about and what Puck is talking about and everything's going to kind of knit itself together. I mean, that's that's my ideal. That's absolutely right. And it's um, that's why we are where we are, where we're, where we're at, you know, with conceptual, we're, we're trying to work out these, um, these larger issues and, and everything that you're seeing, especially from a landscaping point of view, is going to be refined a lot from where yeah. it is today. So, so uh, let me just get back to my board, sir. Uh, yes. Not to cut you off. I'm glad you no. said that you were understanding and following along. So, um, but Cass and, and Puck, um, I know you both have already made some comments. Does that kind of gel with what you're yes, trying to does. get across? Absolutely. Cass? Yes, I, what, I am, what I am trying to say is that I think simplification would be, you would be well served and that, um, I, I appreciate your idea for keeping a natural landscape. Of course, you need a landscape person to help you with that, uh, to figure out how that can happen. Um, but I, I feel um, that it just needs a lot of simplification. And I do appreciate the, your desire and what you're expressing, but I'm not seeing that in the, you know, it's not, not being expressed that way yet. So I'll look forward to seeing where you get to next time. Okay, so Nicole, um, I think if you capture the gist of uh, yeah, I think I got it. Thank you. Okay. And, I, and I'm sorry, Cass. I I, um, I no, wasn't totally okay. clear, but I understand yeah. now, and I I, I kind of wrote it the way Bethany summarized. So I, I think I got it. Yeah. Okay, that's that's the important part. <laughs> okay, uh, Robin. I agree with the uh, comments so far, and I think Puck elegant, eloquently said it, this is an intriguing challenge, and I, it's a really exciting project bringing these old buildings back, and I, I support, I wholly support your, um, the entrance, the ingress and egress, and I, I think that, I hope that that can uh, come through. That's it. Okay. Uh, Alan. I have nothing to add. <laughs> you like being last, don't you? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I'll, I'll be, uh, Alan can be penultimate and I'll be last. Um, I, I really don't have anything to add either. Um, and, you know, uh, basically my comment when I kind of interjected myself in the middle of, of Cass's comments and I apologize, Cass. But my comment that I made at that time, that's pretty much where I was going with it. And I think anything else, uh, I think I'm, I'm looking forward. I would echo what Cass said. I'm looking forward to this as, as everything kind of gels together and you get a little further in the, in the process. And I think that comes full circle um, to how we'd like to see this return. Um, I think we'd like to see it return preliminary. Um, but I think we'd like you to get one to get your design a little more uh, finalized. But I think we'd be a lot more comfortable um, if you were able, if the applicant is able to, um, and the county actually is yeah. able to both work through some of these big uncertainties hanging out there. Um, see if you can figure out what's going to happen with that vehicle entrance and exit figure out what's going to happen with the parking. So at least we're kind of comfortable committing because what we don't want to do is we don't want to give preliminary approval to a, basically a plan that is never going to be able to work through the county's process. Agree. That's where we're trying to get. Um, it's, you know, time reasons, financial reasons, um, design reasons, like we we're very much just kind of flailing through this at this point because we cannot get a clear answer about anything. So it's very difficult to go and spend a lot of money on a landscape designer 
when we don't even know if we can have a driveway, for example. It's well, like, uh, I, I would say that um, you're probably, you know, that's just me. I'm a landscape designer. So, of course, I'm going to tell you that I don't think it would be a waste. I think the sooner you get somebody just for my own per- personal level, I think the sooner you can kind of get your team to gel and 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 everything. And I don't think it would be a big upfront. But that's that's you. You do your thing the way you need to do it. But um, I would like to see you come back um, for a preliminary level review uh, or an approval, hopefully, um, once the county has been able to give you some of that. Yes. so that you guys aren't just spinning your wheels in front of us. There is one uh, question too for you guys. I don't know if this is within your purview or not. Um, and I think it just really briefly touched on it last time the planner mentioned it, Eric, this time, but the uh, public works it wants us to install, um, you know, like an Irvine, Orange County type of curb and gutter and road and sidewalk and street lighting and i think that and, we and, can and. i think i can lay your mind to rest and say that the board supports um uh something that is much more in keeping with the rural community mm-hmm. um and i believe we gave you comments last time and i think we can just emphasize that for the planner okay i appreciate right? that so um i think that would nicole if you grab that comment that'd be great but I think that would conclude our comments for this project. So anybody else have anything else to add? Or any, no, any further fine. discussion? I'm fine. Okay, so um, to the planner, uh, that's how we'd like to see them return is to us at, at a time that is appropriate with um, you know, gelling both of the reviews. Okay. Thank so you. I Great. think that concludes uh, that item. Let's go to item number three. Thank you all. Uh, Madam Chair, one thing. Um, so just to clarify, they're coming back for concept? Preliminary. Or preliminary. Okay. All right. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Item number three, 20 bar 118 Ross edition. Um, so just like we've been doing, Nicole, if you could read the comments yep. while Leah gets the applicant um, sharing their screen and that gets that up and running. Okay, the comments are nice project, modest proposal. Plans need to be updated to reflect the revised extent of the addition and to ensure project plan and ensure that the project plans match the project description. All finished materials and details to match existing would be helpful to have full elevations on all four sides. And it um, was received preliminary approval uh, with the project to be pulled back five feet for fire access and with the future accessory structures to be removed from the project plans. Okay. We We have an applicant. So Eric, are you still with us? Yes, I am. Hi, Eric. So for this project, I invited, looks like Jay Oliver, but I don't see him on the list. Yeah, I'm wondering what's going on. I think he had, he was having some uh, potential computer issues, but I can start if, if the board would be okay with that. Um, no. The, the comments are pretty simple here. Nope, I need the applicant. Um, tell you what, why don't we go to the next item and we'll come back to this one when the applicant is, can present for us. Okay. Let me, and, um, yeah. and I, I'm just wondering it. And, and just to kind of put this, I guess, in, in your mind, and I know you, you all have rules that you have to work by, but the comments on this were really, um, they were largely. Points. Eric, this is Nicole. It, it needs to be the applicant presenting. So oh. this one does need to be continued to the end. And okay. if they're not available, they'll have to come back at the next meeting. We can't have the planner present the project. Okay. Okay. Thanks. I, I, I'm sorry, Eric. They smacked my wrist. I can't let you do that. <laughs> Sounds good. But we appreciate Eric suggesting that he could perhaps help. Uh, uh, on behalf of members of the public and the applicants, um, I understand why he's 
trying to help, but yes. this is what we got to do. So, all right, I'm going to go to item number four, uh, 21 bar, 31 Blankenship Edition and Accessory Structure. And it was continued, but we didn't hear it. So I don't believe there are any minutes. Um, does the, and I haven't asked this before, it, is there anything we need to hear from the planner or should we just start in with the applicant? This is Ben Singer, the planner. I think we can just start in with the applicant. Perfect. All right. Leah, why don't you get that going and we'll start on number four. All right, Trevor, you're good to go whenever you're ready. Trevor, it looks like you might be trying Good. to, speak, but you're still muted. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yep, we, we can. can. Okay, I unmuted you on my phone, but not the computer. <laughs> All right, I'll start over. Uh, Trevor Ebers with uh, DMHA Architecture here to present uh, this new project for you here for conceptual review. Um, this is a small interior remodel and addition to a house located in Solving. Uh, and with that being said, I'll start my presentation. Um, we'll give you a little bit of lay of can the you, land. Can uh, you give us a little uh, more site in you know, vicinity location? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll just jump into that right now. Okay, no worries. Um, you, you guys can see my screen, correct? Yes, we can. Great. Okay. Um, yes. So to give you an idea of where this house is situated, um, along right here is Alamo Pintado Road. As you're coming up Alamo Pintado towards uh, Highway 154, uh, you see Adobe Canyon here. That is the main street that they are located off of. Um, if any of you are familiar with uh, the vineyard Lincourt, uh, Lincourt Vineyard is is about right here. So as you come onto Adobe Canyon, you kind of pass through Lincourt Vineyard, uh, come up Adobe Canyon, and then you take a left here, which is a semi-private road, still considered Adobe Canyon, but more of a private road. And they're situated back in here on a five-acre site. So a nice little private driveway. You kind of meander through some local vineyards up into this neighborhood and they're situated a little bit higher up um, on a knoll um, with a pretty private uh, surrounding. And then give you guys a little bit of a brief project description. So the current uh, site, as I said, is five acres. Uh, there is a 1,270 square foot existing residence. Um, with a 370 square foot carport on it currently. We are proposing to demolish the existing carport and workspace that is attached to it. And then we will be building a new 745 uh, square foot master suite that includes a new bedroom, bathroom, uh, closet, and a secondary uh, room that will be used as either a workspace or a gym. Um, other part of the scope of the work is to to build a new uh, detached carport totaling around 490 square feet. Um, and then the interior remodel consists of a kitchen reconfiguration, relocating a laundry room, um, and then a, a few other minor interior, interior moves. Um, site work is limited to a driveway reconfiguration to work with the new addition, as well as the new carport, and then some landscape modifications as well to just work with the new layout and to create a new uh, entry. Uh, let me, I'll go through some site photos to give you guys an idea of the property. So this is, as you come off Adobe Canyon Road, um, coming into their property, they're not on their property yet, you're still on the private road, but as you see here, this is 2100 Adobe Canyon. The house is situated up on the knoll here, kind of nestled in this little, nice little orch, uh, oak orchard uh, or oak grove. Um, so the house is pretty private right now, as you can see in this photo from the, from this, from the even from the private road, you can, can't really see it, which is nice. Once you get into the 
up onto the knoll. It's a nice uh, private little situated house with uh, that's orientated towards all the views. Uh, another shot as you're coming down the driveway, coming at, up to the entry gate. And then this is the what you see once you get up to the to the house into the little motor court. So you can see pretty simple structure right now. Um, this is the main residence. Here is the attached existing attached carport and workspace. These are the two structures that we will be removing under this under the scope of work. And then just another shot here, entry. Another view of that existing carport and workspace. A side shot from the guest parking area. Um, you'll see here this is existing trellis that we'll be removing. Um, something also to note, there, the existing house was new, recently repainted. Um, you can see they're pretty uh, um, muted tones. Uh, it's like a light gray with a darker, darker wood trim around the house. They do, the clients do like this color palette, so we will uh, all the new new square footage and new additions we will be proposing to match this kind of color palette that should that we think works pretty well with the site. Uh, here's a shot from the backyard, looking at the existing um, raised uh, deck off of the kitchen and living room space. And then just a couple shots of the side yard. And then here's our existing site plan. So again, I'll give you a little bit, go, give, orientate you a little bit. Up here on the top right hand corner of the screen is the driver entry. Come into that entry gate that you saw in the photo. Come up this up this driveway, kind of swoop in, and then as you get here, you're kind of that's where you start to nestle in that that existing uh, oak orchard or oak grove. Um, here's the existing residence. As I said, pretty simple structure, just one continuous um, gable roof. And then with the attached uh, workspace and carport, that will be that will be demolished as well as that existing trellis. As I said, the remaining remainder of the site work is to reconfigure the driver, driveway a little bit that you'll see in the proposed site plan. A little bit of grading associated with the new addition, as well as we will be removing this this stair that goes from the from the deck down to the to the backyard. Um, it's currently just a little bit of a funky configuration with this existing deck, so we're cleaning it up a little bit to work better with the new addition. Um, some other notable site, site elements that are existing on the site is the existing septic tank and field down here, uh, existing uh, liquid propane tank, and existing uh, 5,000 gallon water tank that will all remain and uh, be used and nothing, no, nothing changing to that. Excuse me for interrupting, but um, if you have a yeah. cursor, do you have a cursor that you're showing? I'm not seeing your cursor uh, where you're indicating what we're looking at. I, I'm figuring it out, but it would be helpful if I could see your arrow. Oh, this sorry. Is, yeah, I do. It's I a hand. You have a cursor. I don't, and I can't. Yeah, I don't know why. It's, I'm not this is Ben. I believe it's just lagging by a couple of seconds. Oh, okay. So I've, I've seen your cursor, but Trevor, when you mention something, you usually, your screen takes a couple of seconds to catch up to where you are, just Got so you're aware. Okay. I'll, tr I'll try to, I'll, I'll try to slow down a little bit. <laughs> Thank you. That, that's helpful. Um, yeah, I have a, hopefully you can see I enlarged the, there should be a yellow ring around it now. So you can see that, but I'll, yeah, I'll try to go a little bit slower. Okay, so here is our proposed site plan. Um, just, as you can see, the existing residence is right here. Um, so as I said, we're, our, the, the scope of the work is to do a new master suite addition, which we've situated off to the corner here, creating you know, a simple L configuration, which uh, for 
main reason for situating it over here is a lot of the views are out this direction towards the mountains and the rest of the valley. So this was a nice area to put it for the master suite so we can just get, obtain all those views to the, to the new space. Also, this configuration also kind of creates a nice uh, entry sequence by kind of enclosing, enclosing that entry a little bit more, uh, kind of creating more better sense of space in here. Um, you can start to see here, we separated the new addition from the existing residence, pulled it apart a little bit to kind of make it two separate structures. And what we did was we attached it with this, this small hallway that's this, this glassed in hallway that we'll, uh, you'll see once we get into the elevations and floor plans. Um, up here on the top portion of the screen is where we located the new carport. Also, again, you know, detaching that from the existing residence um, just to not, not impact the existing residence as much and just kind of create these separate structures that are situated around it. Um, we reworked the driveway a little bit to create the guest parking, pulled it away from the original location, which was right here, just to create a more private space for the new master addition um, and just to kind of make it work better with the new entry sequence. Um, that's that. Let me go to the next plan. The existing demolition plan, you can see again, the existing carport and workspace that will be removed. Um, rest of the work is limited to removing the kitchen to be so it can be reconfigured as well as the laundry room which will be removed um, this existing deck we are proposing to keep the structure but just uh, resurface it and then also add a little bit of deck space to it to just kind of clean up the geometry of it as well as remove the stair to, to work better with the new addition Let me get to okay now for so for the proposed plan i'll uh I'll start you from the driveway um so down here at the bottom of the screen is uh where the guest parking was situated as you saw on the site plan um this existing this um space is somewhat landscaped right now um but what we propose on doing is adding a few new uh, raised wooden walkways to kind of create more of an entry sequence. So we situated one coming off of the guest parking space and then another coming off of the carport. So as guests come in, they can kind of meander through this raised uh, wooden walkway through a landscape, a nice landscaped area into the entry and just kind of added a jog in there to, you know, kind of create some movement as you're coming in. And then, yeah, as I said, the other one coming up the carport. And then, so to, for the floor plan layout, you come into the entry, uh, existing living and dining room space to remain. Uh, what we did here though, was we're adding two new pocketing doors, pretty, you know, pretty wide. I think this one's about 10 feet. I think this one's about 12 or 14 feet. Uh, all the views, you know, are out towards the covered dining in this covered lounge space. So we really just wanted to open up this corner of the, of the living and dining room space just to get access to all those views. And, you know, it's, a, it's, we're out, out here in the Valley, the weather's always nice. So creating more of an indoor outdoor uh, living environment is what, the clients wanted and what's appropriate for the area. So getting these, uh, these larger door systems in here really, really helps with that. Um, coming over to the kitchen, you can see a new kitchen layout that's a little bit larger because we grabbed the existing laundry room space to enlarge it, um, but pretty simple layout, somewhat similar to what was there before. Uh, come down the hallway, you have an, a couple of existing bedrooms as well as an existing bathroom or two existing bathrooms to remain. 
Uh, bedroom one was the existing master bathroom that, or master bedroom that will be repurposed as a guest bedroom. Um, and here you can see where we resituated the, the laundry. Off of the bedroom wing side is uh, where the new carport is. You know, it's conceptual design right now, uh, just showing some, some sort of storage along that back wall. I'm going to come back over to the living and dining room space. Um, as you come back down here, this is where you can see how we, with this new, this new master addition, we pulled it away from, from the existing residence. As I, as I was saying, just to, you know, let it be a separate structure, um, but we're joining it with this, with this hallway that's going to be this, pretty much it's this, uh, this glassed in porch hallway, uh, allowing it to, you know, same thing, kind of combine it with the, with the, out, with the outdoor um, landscaping. So you kind of, instead of just walking through a hallway, you're almost walking through this, uh, this outdoor, outdoor garden to get to your master bedroom. Then as you get into your master bedroom, you walk into the actual bedroom um, and same thing, you know, opening up the corner to, uh, to grab those, those beautiful views of the mountains, um, which are you know, obviously important. Uh, closet situated off to the left hand side on the more to kind of create create some more privacy from the entry and then as you come down here just like a you know creating a central access point to this hallway that you access your master bathroom as well as that secondary uh, room that will be either used as an office or a gym um, same thing here you know the as I said the views the views are pretty much you know, all around here. So, um, we added, you know, a, a single fr French door with a side light and then another pretty wide window here just to grab, grab all those, all those views. And then both the office gym and the master bedroom have access to a new, uh, private or quasi semi private, um, deck space off of the master bedroom. They'll create be probably used as a nice little um, outdoor lounge area for you know sunset sun sunrise uh, times, um, which would be pretty nice. And I'll kind of show you the existing demo and proposed roof plans. The existing demo on the right, you can see where that existing carport and workspace will be removed. Then on the left over here, um, the new addition with its uh, shed roof over that new covered patio. New carport over here to the left. And then something I didn't touch on was off of the, off of the uh, existing living and dining room space, what we're proposing to do is can extend this existing gable roof line over that new outdoor uh, lounge area. Um, just to create another uh, shaded uh, outdoor living space. Um, since, you know, like the summertime can get pretty brutal up there, we just want to create some nice uh, shaded outdoor living spaces as well as give some more shading to the, to the interior spaces because right now they, the house heats up pretty heavily. Um, as well as adding a new trellis off of this portion of the dining dining room space again just to create some more usable outdoor spaces um, as well as shade the interior spaces and then here we have a few some uh, conceptual uh, elevations so at the bottom um, you can see the existing demo plan you know starting to show where we're peeling peeling away um, Parts of the architecture, so showing the de de demolition of that existing carport and office. Um, you'll see here that all the windows do show as being demoed. Um, only a few of them we are enlarging, but the rest of them are being uh, shown as demolished just because we will be replacing them. They're currently single pane um, aluminum windows, I believe. So um, the client wants to, you know, obviously replace them with some higher energy efficient windows uh, that will also, um, and something a little bit nicer too, you know, probably probably go with like a, a dark bronze uh, dorm window system 
to fit better with the new architecture. Um, up here, you have the, the new um, proposed uh, west elevation. So here on the right side, you're seeing the new master suite addition. Um, this is a window to the, to the master bath and a window into the office space. Uh, we are proposing to match all existing materials, as I said before. So new plaster finish will match the existing residence. Uh, the new standing seam roof over the new addition will match the existing residence. Um, so everything, all the existing materials will be matched. Other than this, this fireplace, you know, there's no stone uh, in the existing uh, um, design. So we will be proposing a new uh, stone finish for that fireplace. Over here to the left, you can start to get a glimpse of the new carport. And then we have some perspective views for you here. We know we're, we're here for concept and this, it, we're still in the works of, of the design, but um, it's easy for us or getting easier for us to put these together. And this is just kind of how we work with the client. So obviously want to show you guys this as well so you can start to uh, see what the project's uh, shaping up to. Um, so this shot is shown coming off of the guest parking entrance. You, so you can see here that's that raised wooden platform that I was, I was speaking of kind of meanders you through that, that new gardenscape takes you to the entry. Um, and here's the shot just a little bit farther back. So you get to see the new master suite addition with how it, and uh, how it is, how it sits adjacent to the existing residence. And then here you have the north elevation, showing what's being peeled back. And then here you get a, another glimpse of how the new addition sits in, a, in a comparison to the existing residence, as well as that that new carport. Um, and for the carport, you know, it's going to be a, a slight pitched roof with a, a part of part of it will be partly enclosed with a horizontal wood siding, and the rest of it will be just left open. And here's a couple more shots. A shot from the driveway entry, you get a view of the, the new carport. And, you know, as I said, the house is situated kind of, you know, surrounded by all these trees. And we want to add a few more to the landscape um, in the center space to really kind of add to that. Um, it's really nice up there right now how it's just kind of makes it feel really private, even though there's not too many houses around, but everything's pretty bare around it. So adding that, those, all of those existing oak trees are um, definitely really nice. Client really likes them. So we're going to be adding a few more to kind of help uh, nestle it in. Um, here's a shot from the walkway that takes you from the carport to the entry. Um, here you can see that, that glassed in hallway that I was talking of uh, that connects the new addition to the existing residence. Um, we just love this because, you know, as you're coming through from, as you get out of your car and you're walking towards your house, this is just that moment that frames, frames the, the, the mountains beyond. It's just kind of always, you know, that picturesque moment um, that we think is going to be really awesome. Um, also just looking, you know, looking through the garden and towards the mountains. And then here we have for you the east elevation is the, the backyard, um, again, showing that what's being demoed. Um, you can see the backside of the carport um, with that horizontal wood siding. Um, here you get the glimpse of the, the existing deck. Um, I, I didn't say before, but we will be removing the existing guardrail that's uh, non-compliant and proposing a new, a new guardrail there. Um, here you see the new uh, standing seam roof that will be extending off the existing residence to create that new covered outdoor space. And 
Here's a couple of shots of the backyard. It kind of starts to show this new trellis trellis area off the off the dining space. And then here's another shot from the backyard. We really like this one. Um, feel this one really good at showcasing the project. Um, as I said, here's that that new trellis off the dining space. We're proposing some sort of retractable uh, awning uh, canopy above that, so they can, you know, close it when they need that shade, but open it up when it's uh, later in the day and want to get get some more light into the house. Um, here's that new standing seam roof that comes off the existing residence, creating that that really nice outdoor living area. You can see these those large uh, pocketing door systems that will really open up the interior to the exterior spaces, um, as well as that new uh, shed roof off of the existing, or the new uh, master suite addition. And then here you have the south elevation. And, you know, showing good view to show the relationship of the two structures. And then here's a good shot of, you know, the new covered outdoor space, just showing how, how that will be used. Um, getting that, that, that volume in that space as well uh, was really desirable for the clients because they wanted to be able to have some 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 fans and possibly some uh, ceiling heaters so they can use the space even during the during the um, winter and the cold 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 nights that they have. And then here's a shot from that from in, from the backyard looking through. Again, there's that that peek through that you get through that that glassed in hallway that we think is just pretty sweet. Um, as you're walking through, you kind of get a glimpse through and just get to even experience the landscaping on on the entry side even when you're on on the on the backyard side and then here you get to see that that new semi-private um, porch space off of the master suite edition and you can see how in terms of materiality as I said matching same stucco color same roof color um, all the new wood elements we're proposing to be, you know, a lighter uh, natural stained wood just to kind of uh, bring those uh, earthy tones in. Um, you know, this is on somewhat of a hillside, so trying to kind of work with the uh, surrounding uh, color palette. Um, so, and yeah, work, work with that. And then with that, I think that ends my presentation. As I said, we're here for a conceptual review and uh, excited to get some uh, feedback and any comments that the board can provide. Thank you. All right. Um, are there any um, questions regarding uh, clarity or understanding? Anybody have any questions for the applicant? Okay, now nah, I don't hear any. Seems like a really thorough presentation. Thank you very much. Um, Leah, do we have any um, public comment? Uh, Madam Chair, there are no requests to speak. Okay, um, then I'd like to come back to the board. Um, anybody want to go first? Okay. Cass, you want to start us off? Oh, I was just going to let some of those other ones go first, but I'll go first. Um, I think this is a great project. Um, I think they've done a, a, a beautiful job and that it's very sensitive and appropriate. So I have nothing more to say than that. Good job. All right, Puck. Yes. Um, I, I just had one, one comment and it's, uh, I actually know this house pretty well. And um, I think this is a, great um great renovation to the to this uh house as it exists today um but i would say um i i i am a fan of wood wooden boardwalks but um there are many rodents and critters 
in the valley. And it's a bit of a challenge actually creating um, a, um, a secured area under them. So skunks especially love to have their babies under those. I've, I've experienced that actually several times uh, with wood decks. So um, in the San Ynez Valley. So um, if I, I'll be anxious to see your, um, your construction solution to, to that. But um, uh, I do think it's um, a really nicely done project. Thank you. Okay, uh, Robin. Um, I think it's a great renovation. And and a really good presentation. Thank you. Okay, Alan. I also like the presentation on particularly like the way they kind of nestled it back in there by adding the trees and the design of the walkways was really quite unique. Okay, um, I'd like to say that I don't have anything to add, although um, I, I will say that um, even in the more urban areas of Solvang and Buellton and so on and so forth, um, the the um, the critter population is it's real. Um, currently, have a weasel that is living around here, where I live in Solvang. So, um, yeah, raccoons, possums, all those kinds of things, and Yes, skunks. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, but excellent no, presentation. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, we really appreciate it. Uh, the rest of the board, I think they're, sounds like they're ready to come back. Uh, does anybody have an objection to preliminary final? Absolutely not. And um, I think we should move forward with preliminary final. Okay. So thank you very much. Great, thank um, you guys, and thanks for the, the rodent uh, suggestion. That's actually something I didn't think of, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, oh no, it's it's the the it's real. <laughs> yeah. Squirrels, gophers, you name it, we got yeah. it. Um, okay, so Leah, uh, do we have an applicant for item number three? We do. Um, Jay, I have you available to speak whenever you're ready. Okay, so Jay, why don't you go ahead and get your screen um, sharing going on there. And um, I know we already called the item and read the comments, but um, I'd like to go ahead and redo that just so we, um, everything's together. So this is item number 320 bar 118, Ross edition. Nicole, can you do the comments again? Did I lose you, Nicole? Sorry, I'm having some technical difficulties. Um, is this, I did not see comments on this one. Um, hold on, let me. From 4.9. So it would have been the, it's I, the Ross edition? I, okay, so normally they're in the agenda and they're not for this one. Oh, so they, I have them go. on mine. I see them. Uh, right. Okay. Well, you want me to I read them? Lose. Yeah, if you could. Thanks. Sure. Uh, the C-bar comments, and, and I apologize if, if this is not what's in the, uh, the, the, well, no, this would be two meetings before, so it's fine. Right. Nice project. Modest proposal. Plans need to be updated to reflect the revised extent of addition and ensure that project plans match the project description. Uh, all finished materials and details to match existing would be helpful to have full elevations on all four sides. All right, so um, applicant, I guess that's Jay. Take it away. Show us where we are. Bring us um, back into just a quick vicinity. Get us located and then tell us what you did. Thank you. And we can't hear you, so if you're talking... Turn your mic on. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm having a little difficulty. I am down in the middle of Baja, so <laughs> forgive me. The film communication might be a little broken. Okay, we just lost our screen sharing, it looks like. Can you hear me? 
Okay, so I've got a screen. Hello? Yes? Hello? Yes? Yes, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Okay, you want to walk us through what you've done and the plans? Um, yeah, so we, 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 you asked for some elevations. Uh, we made, made those corrections. We got those. Uh, the architect could bring those up. And then just, I think the other thing was uh, some wording, and we took care of that as well for the master edition on the uh, south side of the existing house. Uh, you want to explain what we're looking at? I, I can't see it. I'm on my phone. Ah. Well, we kind of, well. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? Um, Madam Chair, I, yes. I guess I'm not fully clear this. Um, I know, I know the applicant is having difficulty because they're on a phone and they can't see the graphics. Um, but I feel like I need a little bit of more help walking through. I, they, I recall from last time, but I, I could use a little more help understanding how it's different than before. Maybe the planner could help or something. The planner cannot do the presentation. Okay. There, there was a, you asked for another elevation. Uh, I believe it was the uh, north side elevation. So that was the only thing that was asked of elevation wise. Okay. So typically you would then describe to us what we're looking at and describe which part is. Yeah, I, I, are you looking, are you looking at the, so there was one elevation left out from the last one. It only showed three sides. Okay, and well, we're seeing done. right, rear, front, and then left. Correct. And which portion so is... Last time, last time, I believe we only had right, rear, and front. So can you tell us about these elevations? For example, which part is proposed and which part isn't? Is existing? <laughs> yeah, I, would, I mean, I wish I could see it because I'd be able to describe it a little bit better. The proposed is the master wing off the garage side. Right. And I'm sure there's a graphic difference. Could you please state what that is? Uh, a what difference? That it's graphically depicted differently. For example, is there oh, shading on? Proposed. It should say proposed, proposed master edition. So I'm looking at an elevation, say the right side. Um, uh, looks like something that could be a garage door, um, is in a wall that doesn't have any, uh, pushe or anything. And, and, and then there's this other section of the elevation, which has some texturing graphically. Is that the yeah, addition? The texturing would be, the, so yes, I'm, I'm going to say that the texturing would be the new addition. Okay. Um, and Again, I apologize. I wish I could see it. But... And um... and these are the revised plans. I'm assuming. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Because there was that. Um, can we go back to the site plan there? And there was a, there was one on the plan. Uh about the details, a little wording in the details. Right, well, let's, so let's, let's do one thing at a time. All right, so now we're looking at um, a site plan and you've got the walls. That was just the reason for the difference in what you showed us last time and this time, correct? Right. Correct, yes. Okay, so, um, uh, and I did see it on the elevations. I think we all did, um, the note. That said, all windows, doors, materials, roofing, colors to match existing. Right. Um, existing and uh, existing details. Correct. 
Yeah, that's what we're asked to have, to have added. Okay. Um, board, do you have any questions? Do we need to see anything? He is here for final. We already took the preliminary action. Okay, I'm not hearing any questions. Uh, anybody have any comments? Uh, I think he's, uh, I'll just say it looks like he's ticked off all the things we asked him to bring back for final. I'll make a motion for final approval. Thank you. I'll second. This is Bethany. Do we have any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. We're good to go. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. And I apologize for the bad communication for where I am. <laughs> Okay, so let's go to item number five, 21 bar one, Harvey single family dwelling. And I believe um, the minutes were in the amended set, Nicole. So if the applicant could go ahead and um, get um, his screen sharing going so that we can seamlessly go into that after the minutes are read, hey, that would be I excellent. I can go ahead and start the reading them if you, you'd like. Yes, please do, Nicole. And Leah, can you coordinate with the applicant so that he can start sharing the screen right now? Okay, so the minutes say the applicant is requesting an exemption from Hillside requirements. When applicants request an exemption to Hillside originally height requirements, we ask them to first look at all the available design tools to really work with the topography of the site in order to minimize the need to exceed hillside ridgeline height requirements. These design tools include, but are not limited to following contours, use of existing flat areas, pushing structures into the site, et cetera. Based on review of the plans, there are still many, <clears throat> many opportunities to improve the design in this regard. The chosen colors help the structures blend into the site, Look at moving the home further back into the site and away from Calle Zapazana. The applicant may need to let go of some views in order to mitigate impacts. Consider if the home were dropped down lower and nestled further into the overall, nestled in further, the overall massing would be reduced. So the long, narrow building design makes the home appear larger than it is. We cannot rely on landscape to lessen the impact of a home design. Would like to see an effort to lower portions of the structure as much, much as feasible, even if not reduced all the way to 16 feet. Some reductions are still possible. Would like to see more detail in the landscape plan, including a section showing how avocados would be laid out on the slope. Consider studying if there's a way to make the home feel more nestled instead of out on the promontory. Provide cross sections through the site, including the road, and also show proposed landscaping and proposed structures. For example, extend section B-B through the drive. Show envelope of the height limit above the existing grade as required per Hillside Ridgeline guidelines. Graphically depict and document areas of the structure that exceed the height limit. Could potentially consider a model to demonstrate site characteristics and constraints. And before preliminary final approval can be granted, please provide preliminary and final landscape plan, including sizes, quantities, and species. And it says they can return for prelim final. Thank you. All right. Um, we'd like to hear from the applicant. Um, just going to throw the caveat, standard caveat in here. Um, please um, limit your um, presentation to the submitted drawing set. Uh, with that, please take it away. I am, uh, can you, uh, oh. I am Bill Harvey. Maureen and I are the property owners. I'm sorry. Bill, uh, can you allow, allow them to allow John Mutlow to uh, do the screen sharing? Did, did okay. they get that? Can you allow uh, John Mutlow to do the screen sharing, please? Leah, did you get that? Yeah, he's already co-host. So whenever you're okay. ready. Not a problem. All right. I'll start over. <laughs> uh, one second, Bill. Okay.
Why isn't it coming? There we go. Okay. Okay. Right. Now, can you guys now see? I can start. Okay. Uh, I am Bill Harvey. Marine and I are the property owners. Also, uh, John Mutler, the architect, and his staff, along with Mike Viatoni, the civil engineer, are here. Um, we have taken your suggestions and have reduced the height. We've done that in four ways. Uh, we, don't, we have bunkered the house in an additional 18 inches, as you suggested. No, go to the section. Uh, if we could go to, and then the second thing we did is we moved the house south six feet to improve the siding, as you suggested. Could you scroll down to that, the one with the red? Bunk Wait a second, Bill. Wait a second, Bill. We're just showing right. the bunkering. Okay. Wait a minute. We gotta get out. Okay. All right. So we're. Uh, plan. Well, plan. Right. All right here, this exhibit with the red dotted line, or broken line, I should say, shows that we moved the. Uh, the site six inches south, six feet. six feet south. And by doing that, um, we uh, also were able to reduce the height. Then additionally, um, we lowered the ceiling heights and the parapet heights. So let's start, let's leave it where it is to start with. So, yeah. section. Let, let's go to the... Let's go to the one that shows the um, parapet, the, the ceiling plan or the uh, roof plan so I can show the what we did with the parapet. Okay, if you'll notice on this plan, on the, on the south side, that's the bottom side of the master bedroom. And on the east side of the master bedroom, we moved the parapet wall halfway up the room so that we're a flush roof where it says master bedroom. By doing that, we were able to completely remove the parapet because all the utilities and any um, solar panels will be uh, behind that. But by doing it because of the contours you see there, uh, we were able to make a substantial reduction in the height. And you can see the darker line and he's gone over it with the red here to show you what, what portion of each room uh, has had the parapet removed. Um, we also lowered some ceiling heights. Now, um, in, in doing this, the result is uh, total height reductions from three feet to six feet at the corners. And in most cases, closer to uh, five feet than anything else. That leaves us with 19 heights below 16 feet. Um, three that are 16 feet and inches, and one that is at 17.6 in an inside corner behind the deck. The lowest is now seven feet 10 where it is bunkered in the most, you know, the 18 inches additional uh, added to that. These heights have been achieved in a house only one room wide in an L shape to follow the contours. Um, if, we, if we look at the um, landscape plan, I wanted to discuss the uh, box oaks that we talked about last time. We added uh, two 24 inch box oaks on the east side. However, with the height reductions, we think the oaks might not be the best option now for the following reasons. The house is no longer visible and we'll look at the elevations here shortly to, to show that. The house is no longer visible where the oaks were suggested to screen the house on the east side along Cali Lipizzana. Uh, the avocado tree, uh, trees do that by themselves now. And, and if we can go to the sections, we can show that. Um, 
Second reason, we would have to remove mature producing avocado trees. Uh, we need the sections. Third, the mature oaks would tower over the grove, much like the lone palm we inherited in the grove and, and seem out of place. Four, because the oak canopy is higher above the ground, the lower portion of the house would be revealed as the uh, oaks matured. And five, uh, because of the utility easement along Calais Lipizzana and the size of the oaks, the trees would be close to the house, a, a condition the fire department does not like. Now we're, we're fine with the landscape plan with the oaks in. I just wanted to make those comments for you to think about um, because uh, it, it seems that you know, when we, when we started talking about that, we were assuming that we, we had a problem. But if you look at these sections, um, you can see that now that the house has been lowered uh, at least three feet everywhere, the trees completely screen it. If you could scroll down, I think we have two or three like this. Section. Um, yeah, the, on the sections, I'm sorry. Just scroll, I think we have a couple more if you wanna scroll down. This is up, uh, of course, up above quite a ways, uh, up Kagi Lipizzana. And there, here's some of the, uh, here's some of the sections. Uh, now, if you'll notice uh, at the very top, <clears throat> there's a red broken line. And that is the 16 foot line. So you wanted to know how much of the house was below 16 feet. Uh, and here it's depicted in sections CC, uh, BB, and AA. Or, uh, we can go, go back to the others too if you want to. The elevations as opposed to the sections. But you can see that it's no, the structure is no longer visible from Calle Lipizzana from, uh, from the east where we were talking about the oak trees. Now, and you can still see the 16 foot line that we've imposed across the, across the building. All right, now let's take a look at the uh, renderings and photos. As you can see from the photos from Calle Lipizzana that you requested, now th this is from the uh, bottom where the road turns to become Calle Lipizzana. And what we did here is we did one with the story poles. That's the top picture here. If we could zoom in on that a little. You can see the, the story poles there. I'd probably have to go one more zoom. There, now you can kind of see it. There, excellent. Now that's the way it was. Now let's drop it down to the rendering. And what, uh, what we did is we left the story poles in the, in the picture, but then we put the rendering where the new elevations are. So you can see that there's been a dramatic uh, reduction in height. I, I hope everybody can see that. Uh, is it clear? I believe so. Yeah, you can see the old, you can see the story poles and then the rendering. All right, let's go down to the next one. This is from closer at the bottom of the hill. Um, again, just the story poles. This, this is... Um, um, Still at the bottom, but uh, much closer. Now, if you would drop down to the rendering. Mm -hmm. the, uh, and this is the uh, this is the rendering uh, set against the uh, story poles, and you can see again that it's been reduced dramatically, and the um, canopy, which is lower, of course, than the roof by a couple, uh, two or three feet, uh, basically has screened the uh, um, top of the uh, great room there. And you no longer see the bedroom. Um, and we've uh, 
um, and if you look over there to the left, uh, we didn't show it completely, but th uh, there will be uh, more avocado trees there also. Okay, uh, let's go on down to the next one. This shot is directly to the side, which I think was one of the main concerns that you had last time. Uh, and this is where you wanted us to plant uh, the oaks. Now, if you could go down to the rendering. As you can see, the avocados now completely uh, block the, uh, uh, the building. This is shot from standing on Calle La Pizana. Okay, let's go down to the shot from above. Now this is the flat area where the cut that we have will be distributed and avocados will be, will be planted. And this is shot from above the, uh, the house site uh, immediately adjacent to Calle La Pizana. So this is what you'd see driving down Calle La Pizana. Now let's go to the rendering. And I don't know what we're representing here is when that area is planted, you won't see anything coming down Calle La Pizana. The house is uh, completely below the, the trees. That area is a bare area right now. So the fertilizer tank will be completely uh, within the grove, so it won't be seen from anywhere. And in, it, the views from up above are completely uh, obliterated. Okay. So we have, we've gone to great lengths to get to this point on a difficult site with an L-shaped house, parallel to the contours, only one room wide, bunkered into the site with a stepped, with a stepped roof. Thank you for your attention. I'm willing to, I'm ready to answer any questions you might have. All right. Thank you very much. Um, are there any um, quick clarification type questions from the board i do have one question please all right Cass. thank you and uh could you just uh go over for us uh show us maybe on the site plan uh where where the couple the one or two places where where uh it's still over the 16 feet yes clear about that thank you okay it's the next yeah there's the exhibit uh if you look um at point number 328, it's under the word office. It's 328. Right there, the red one. Yeah, I see it. Um, 328, uh, that's the 176. And that is, you'll notice, is behind the deck and behind the uh, slide on wire canopy, which as you saw from Kai Lipizzana, completely obliterated the back, um, the back facade. Then if you look at point um, 325, that is at 16 point, this is one of the three that's 16 and change. Um, that is on the west side, which can't be seen from anywhere. Um, but it's, as I said, it's inches above 16 feet. Then if you look at point 326, uh, that's at 16.3. Um, and that of course is on the west side where it can't be seen. And then the last point is um, point 338, which is at uh, 16, I don't know, that must be, 16.9 maybe, or 10, I guess 16.10. 16.9. Yeah, 16.9. And um, uh, again, that's on the west and the south. 
Um, and that is an area where there are currently um, no avocados planted, but when the, uh, as you saw in the uh, landscape plan, those will be planted with avocados. Is that, is that uh, what you wanted to, to say? Yeah, thank, thank you, that helps. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay, I'm not hearing any. Do we have any public comment, Leah? And uh, Madam Chair, we do not have any re requests to speak. Okay. Um, so let's come back to the board here. Um, I believe this item is here for, let me go back and check the agenda real quick. Preliminary and final review. So let's go ahead and, and have a discussion. Um, who wants to start? I'll start. All right, Alan. I think the project has changed substantially. He's been very responsive to every concern that I can think we've had. And uh, I like it. I think it, it'll be good for the community. I think it'd be great for them. And I think the, uh, they all should be commended for actually listening to us and what our ideas were. Okay. Um, Puck? I, I agree. I, I think the um, applicant has uh, worked with us in uh, good faith. And um, I think the renderings with the story polls definitely um, um, address um, our um, demonstrate um, the concerns we had and and how they were addressed and I I I re have always respected um, the applicants um, um, program needs and um, always felt that it could be um, the, those program needs could still be met while addressing some of our concerns. And I, I think you have accompl accomplished that. And, and thank you for um, all your efforts. This is a good package. That's all I have. Okay, Cass. Thank you. Um, yes, I, I agree with my uh, colleagues' comments and uh, appreciate very much. I hope uh, the applicant um, feels like they, uh, that, that it's also improved for them. Um, I, uh, I, I do really appreciate that they have uh, made this effort. I think it is um, improved and I, um, Oh, I was wondering if perhaps um, either Bethany or uh, Puck could address the issue about the oak tree that, that uh, Mr. Harvey brought up um, and what your thoughts are on that. And I, and I do appreciate that the uh, oak or the uh, planting of the new um, avocados will help to also uh, screen and further nestle in. I really think it is a lot more nestled in than it was before, and I really appreciate that. So thank you, and I'll um, put it back to you guys. Puck, you want to address that real quick? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume that Puck doesn't really have a comment since I'm not hearing anything. Okay. Um, uh, Robin? We haven't heard from you yet. Um, I, I feel I'm okay with the project. However, I do feel a little... Um, left behind as I missed one of the reviews. And I was wondering if I could see the color board, color materials board. Sure. <clears throat> That's in the other package, Shahid. Shahab. Yeah. <clears throat> Give uh, us a second, we'll get to it. 
Okay. Hold on, hold on just a second. Let me look at let me look at what's in the box. It's in the box. Under okay. C bar, uh, under um, 315. There it is. Okay, let, uh, let's go down to the color, color board and materials. We just passed one, I believe, but. Materials. There, you go. there we go. You want, would you, would you mind um, um, just briefly touching on the sure. materials and the, on, and the lighting just really quickly? Okay. Thank um, you. You can see the um, stucco paint. Um, the window finish is um, black. The deck is uh, weathered teak. It's a synthetic pro uh, product, of course. The chip seal on the asphalt driveway is a uh, Montecito custom blend. The uh, finish of the metal roof over along the colonnade and the uh, garage door are copper penny. Um, the finish on the posts and aluminum sunshades is the silver color you see. And the fabric of the slide on wire canopy is, is there. Uh, you wanna go to the next one, Shab? Well, you had that lighting one up. Okay, here we go. That's yeah, the next one. All right, if you notice <clears throat> the lighting, um, it's Aurora light. And if you'll notice the IDA, um, Certification is uh, there for uh, all four all four of the uh, types of lights we have there, and then we also have a marine grade uh, recessed light, which is recessed and uh, and directed down. Um, then up in the upper left hand corner, you have the um, uh, canopy material. However, as you saw, the the color is green. Uh, to blend in, not not the white that's depicted. Um, then um, the weathered teak is still there. You see the you see the details for the shading devices and the railing there. Uh, lower left hand corner, the uh, glass overhang over the front door, um, and then the, at the bottom there, you can. I already talked about the recessed lighting, but you can kind of see it. Um, do we have anything else on this, Shahab? Is there another page? Is what I mean. Uh, not as uh, for materials. No. No. Does, does yeah. that is no, that no. helpful? No. Has the window wall. Yeah. Well, and the window walls there too. Yeah. yeah. No. That's great. They look really appropriate. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Um, they're obviously still needing, I think I got everybody. Nobody has anything else? Everybody's got your comments in? All right, so they're still requesting an exemption, which means that as part of the motion for preliminary, we need to incorporate um, the language of the exemption. Um, they're actually here for preliminary and final. So we need to decide what action uh, we wanna take. Anybody want to make a motion? Uh, Beth, uh, Bethany, did you have comments and did you have uh, anything to say about that oak tree that, that Mr. No. Harvey was looking for input about? No? Um, no, I mean, uh, everybody's pretty much spoken uh, to my comments. Um, okay. I guess I, I, I would like to hear uh, if Puck has anything to add to it. Um, about that, about the oak and the appropriateness of, of whether I, I didn't make that comment. So I was kind of. Oh, I see. Leaving that That's out good. there. Okay. No. So. Um, no. So. Sorry. Um, it's Puck. I'm um, for some reason, my signal got a little wonky for a bit. Um, okay. I. 
I don't have any, um, I don't recall that comment. I, I, I feel badly. Um, <laughs> I think it was made right at the end. And, and so, you know, I, don't I think it was made by Sean. Sorry for interrupting. I think it was made by Sean, the uh, planner. Oh. Oh. Well, that's why we don't remember it. Yeah. And, and I think the purpose of it was um, at the time you were, you were concerned about the top of the building uh, to the east on Kaila Pizana. And of course, with the height reduction, we eliminated the problem that he was trying to address. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, now, now I remember that. Yeah, I sort of, frankly, dismissed it. So, um, um, no, I have, I have no further comments, and I, I, um, I'm, I'm, I don't have the language in front of me, but I, I feel that um, we could make a motion for preliminary final with, and um, meet the exemption or good quantity. design. Yes, in interest of good design. Okay. Um, Nicole, how do you want to capture that as part of the motion? Because it needs to be printed in the minutes. Nicole? Sorry, I had to unmute. Yep. <laughs> it was frozen for a second. The struggle is real. I'm right. telling you. <laughs> like tapping it. <laughs> um, <laughs> So um, you want to say that the, the exceedance in height is granted on the basis of good design? Yeah, I, and I'd like you to actually place, um, we've done this this way before, in the minutes, can you please place the, actually pull the language straight out of the, the finding? And, okay. and state that we're making this finding or, or we're granting this exemption uh, because we can make these findings that it does qualify and that it's that language. And that's part of the motion for us, if you would. Okay. Thanks. And can we include something in there as uh, Mr. Harvey stated that there are gonna be more um, avocados planted there and will, so there will be a consistency across there. And I think that uh, he made a very good point that the um, avocados will cover uh, more than the oak will because- uh, No, I don't even want to go down that rabbit hole. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, just because Cass, and I, I'll tell you why, because this is the motion um, and you know we're not making a condition uh, unless you want to um, amend the emotion for to include a condition, but I wouldn't put it in the motion. Is what I'm saying. I agree, due to the idea that I don't want to set any precedent in a motion for uh, landscape mitigation. I I don't think we need to because I think he has already stated that that's his intention. So I mean that's part of the the and, well and the the plans the bear that out. They do show it. So I, yeah. yeah, if it's not necessary, then then forget okay. I said it. No worries. Uh, okay, so um, Pucks made a motion. I will second it. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Thank you very much, sir. That was a very nice presentation. Thank you. I appreciate you working with us. I appreciate you working with us. Yes. It went <laughs> fairly smoothly, all things considered. Well, okay. I, I, I appreciate the help. All right. Uh, item number six, 20 bar 57, Central Coast Ag. Thank you. There are quite right, a few right. um, comments. So while Nicole is um, sharing the comments, can the applicant please get your presenter? Please let Leah know who the presenter is and get them. That person can go ahead and start sharing their screen right now. Um, OK, so the comments are Seabar continues to find it very difficult to review this type of structure. 
e.g. containers, comma, hoop houses, because the ability to modify the design is extremely limited. Tibar continues to question why design review is requested or required for these types of structures. Within the scope of our constrained purview, and the fact that the storage structures will be removed, the CBAR has come as far as possible and offers the following comments. Landscaping has come a long way and has been incorporated nicely, especially given the constraints that are present. Prefer Great Barrington Green is the preferred option or Alligator Alley, second option. Green screen material is acceptable. CBAR doesn't have a preference with regard to where the panel is mounted in the green screen planters. The final location is at the discretion of the landscape architect. The applicant has confirmed that the whole container will be painted and that there will be no text or trim. Storage containers are not architecture. Lower, the lower portion of the planter should be allowed to weather such that they gray out and do not have sealant stain applied. If it takes one and a half years for landscaping to grow in on a project when the proposed containers will be removed in three years, Landscape screening will be of limited benefit. Land use permit should reflect the proposed parking location as shown on the plans. And um, it states that they can return for preliminary. All right. Um, doesn't look like we have anybody sharing a screen yet. Sorry, all. I am just about ready. No worries. Hi everyone, this is Gwen. I just figured I would give a little update on the project before Lindsay gets started. Sure. So this project was uh, heard by the Planning Commission and it was ultimately approved by the commission and then appealed to the Board of Supervisors. And then it was approved by the board last month in early May. So um, yeah, that's kind of all I wanted to say. I just wanted to give um, you all an update on uh, where the project stands now. Um, has there so been, um, on the planning side, has there been anything that's um, in land use or any of the other review processors, um, you know, board of supervisors, any other boards that have looked at this that have forced any changes to the design? Um, nope, not to the design. I think uh, maybe, Lindsay, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think any changes were made to the design. I think that the only changes were to the odor plan. That was by the Planning Commission. The board didn't have any changes. Okay. Yeah, and, that's correct. And, okay. and what kind of change was that? Oh, it was um, the Planning Commission asked the applicant to um, kind of like bolster some components of the odor plan. Um, for example... The odor plan now includes some additional components like a community outreach um, process where the applicant will provide information about the project and harvesting and um, odor to interested community members. Um, I think that was maybe one of the key changes. There were some other like kind of operational updates made to the odor plan. Um, yeah, I think that kind of covers it though. Okay. All right. Nothing related to, um, to the aesthetics though. But, but not, yeah, nothing that changes. Cause I know on a, uh, there was, uh, I've seen, uh, odor equipment yeah. that, for example, um, had, um, portions of it like perched on top of a fence or, um, or in, um, in an open area, some of the collection stuff. And so I was just, trying to get a feel for mm -hmm. what kind of changes there were. I mean, if the system's exactly the same um, and, you know, it hasn't changed location or scope or anything like that or color, then that's fine. You know, I think that, yeah, that definitely makes sense. Um, so thanks for asking about that. I think Lindsay was, there was maybe one, like an additional um, segment of odor control piping that is now proposed um, is that right? Or maybe that was already proposed last time we came to CBAR. I can't remember. Yeah, our, everything. Um, I'll, I can explain the changes to the project in, in my presentation. Um, it, but you're, there wasn't any physical changes to the layout of the site at all with regard to any odor or anything since our last hearing. Thanks for clarifying. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm just about ready. Sorry, guys. I think the continuance of item four, three kind of threw me a little bit. So I apologize for being less prepared. No worries, we're with you. All right, so can you all see my screen? Yes. Here, let's see where this is at. All right, um, so this this is a, I have all my files here in PDF, but I, I have some photos too that I'm gonna share. So this was the rendering that we had put together for <clears throat> what you could see from the Santa Rosa Road entryway after the landscaping had been planted and um, had grown in after five years. You'll see the, the rendering of the guardhouse right here. Um, and so this is the, the actual guardhouse. So this hasn't changed. This was also approved um, at the planning commission. So um, the landscaping obviously rendering here is a little bit different and I'll go into landscaping a little bit later, but um, this is kind of a good shot of, this is an actual photo of the background of the existing buildings um, with the rendering of the guardhouse as it's seen with the gate. Um, so, this is kind of what it will look like after it's built. Um, we have the floor plan on this document as well. Kind of these stone pillars here, um, kind of a wood-like with a slanted roof. Um, so this is the guardhouse. That's one structure that's being reviewed as a part of this. Um, and so kind of going back to the rendering, um, we, we had three C-bar hearings for conceptual. And so to, for today, we're going for preliminary and final review since we have our conditional use permit approved. And um, really the landscaping is, is something that took a lot of change um, from the three CBAR hearings, um, but there were no changes after the planning commission to our landscape plan. So I'll go into that here. What we changed internally on our landscaping plan um, was not actually recommended by the, the planning commission or the board, um, but it was essentially due to some planting issues that we ran into at the front of the property. Um, initially, when we came to CBAR for conceptual review, we had the hedge and some tree planting running all the way here across the entire Southern property line. Um, however, the topography between the fence line and the gate right here is too far sloped to actually allow any sort of plant to grow and thrive. So um, we made some adjustments to this area of the landscaping plan where we plant, we're actually planting the hedge further back and the, the actual, um, planting that matches the front of the property is going to be located right here. And right here, there's just like a, there was an irrigation pond um, that was existing from many, many years ago. So that's the biggest change to the landscape plan. Um, we, going on to the containers, we rearranged the containers to actually be able to connect them to electrical. This was kind of a, a, when we came to conceptual review, they were kind of in a herringbone shape, um, but that made it physically impossible to um, connect electrical panels. And that's what these little two black dots are here. Those are just the panels. You won't be able to see those at all, um, even when you're on site, right? So if you come here, you're driving by on Santa Rosa Road, you're really only seeing entryway right here like that rendering showed and um, we decided to add some internal plantings here which you've already seen and these containers are now just in a straight line as opposed to being in a herringbone shape. Um, we have the planter that's going to be right here so when you do drive by Santa Rosa Road if there's any visibility of the containers whatsoever um, you know, this very small line of sight right here will be blocked by those planters that are shown on the landscape plan. So if I move to, this is the irrigation setup, how it's going to be irrigated all the way across the board, all the way up to the middle shelf of the property. 
then we have our planter layout. So this is another change from the initial conceptual review. Um, the planter size and height stayed the same. What changed is the actual materials that were going to be used for the vines to grow up. So we moved away from the green screen option um, and that was just because of the weight mostly of the green screen and trying to implement this logistically. We changed to kind of a, a wooden um, frame with some galvanized wire. We kept the, um, the treated redwood as a, I think that was commented on as that was what was desired. So we kept the treated redwood. And so this planter will be placed along all of the containers here along the southern edge. Um, moving on to lighting. So this is kind of our lighting plan as it pertains to where the containers are. We'll have the two lights right here that are required by the um, Santa Barbara County Business Licensing and, and uh, Sheriff's Department. Um, those can be seen, the elevations are right here as the two containers back to back are facing. One of the electrical panels will be in between. Um, lighting is all downward facing. We've chosen this um, Dorado silver motion sensor light, farmhouse barn style with the gooseneck, um, fully cut off and shielded with the motion sensor hidden. Um, that light will be located in only a few places. So um, our approved lighting plan is somewhere here, one sec. So each one of these little black dots, um, I believe is the light. So along the front of the containers here, there's two lights. There'll be one light on this building, one or two lights here on the east side and then the north side of this building, the north side and the east side of this building, and then the west side of this building. Um, there's also going to be another light along the fence line, which we can see it will be located right here. And that is also on the elevations of the lighting plan, I believe, yeah. So this is the, the chain link fence that you can see in the entry rendering. The light will be mounted here. on a pole, so about seven and a half feet up. Same type of light, downward facing, shielded motion sensor. So um, going back to the containers, this is just kind of a 360 view of how the containers are gonna be laid out. Um, we have the full like floor plan view of the containers. Um, where they're going to be located. This kind of square right here is that building that you can see from the entrance. This right here is that 300 or 3,000 square foot greenhouse addition. And then we have groups of 10 units together all the way here. So going back to, I think the last structure that's gonna be a part of this, I believe is the greenhouse addition. And I'm not sure that I have this one on my screen, but I wanted to also address the landscaping that we have planted thus far. Um, we felt fairly confident after three conceptual reviews of the landscaping um, that we could get it started just to kind of get a head start on the five-year screening. Um, so the entire property has been planted with the, the approved landscaping. Here's my greenhouse. Sorry, I'm jumping around a lot. So the greenhouse is the third structure that's being reviewed today. This is an existing 7,000, approximately 7,000 square foot greenhouse. You cannot see this greenhouse at all. 
from any of the viewpoints of the, the property. It's behind all of the buildings along the front. Um, and we're adding a storage canopy addition along the back side of it. So since you can't see the greenhouse and then we're also adding an addition on the back side, it's completely non-visible from any public vantage points. And some here are just some elevations of what it will look like along the northern, eastern, and western edges. Does anyone have any questions about the layout? I can go back to the site plan to just sum up. Um, no, I think it was pretty thorough. I think you walked us all through it. Um, anybody else on the board? Have any questions for clarification? All right, I'm hearing a resounding silence. Uh, do we have any public comment, Leah? No, we do not. Okay. Um, then uh, come back to comments from the board. Um, they are here for the leave final today. Preliminary and final. Come on, somebody say something. I'm okay with the project. Okay. I don't have any further comments. Okay. I, okay. I, I think given our purview, I have no comments. Okay. Um, I think um, the only comment that we would like, uh, Nicole, the only thing I'd like you to do is please essentially continue with that first comment and, um, and then where it says within the scope of our constrained purview, um, the CBAR appreciates the applicants um, uh, attention to previous comments and their responses. Okay, got it. And um, the only thing I'd want to check is um, the there's continuity. Uh, I think there was some concern about the land use permit um, and the parking. Can the planner talk about that? Yeah, definitely. So are you talking about the, um, the, was it like the temporary parking area? Uh, I'm talking about the parking area between GH, the greenhouse and buildings D and N. And kind of um, I would definitely like to speak on that. Um, what exactly, I think I'm, I need a little more direction on what your question okay, is. Okay. I, I think the concern is, is that um, uh, and I was probably the source of this comment. Um, when I was out there on site, everybody just parked wherever they wanted to. Okay. Got it. So are you talking about kind of like enforcing the parking area? Well, I mean, there, there needs to be some kind of, uh, designations because mm -hmm. part of the reason everybody was pretty much parking kind of where they wanted to was because there, there, there wasn't very much definition between, where parking area ends and where it's uh, passed through for things. And I think we had some questions about whether it was going to, or I did, whether it was going to be striped and actually marked and whether the follow through was going to happen. And I think the last time um, the planner used the planner had discussed the fact that you could follow through on the permit and make sure that that actually does kind of follow through. Now, I understand I'm not talking specifically about enforcement, but I'm talking about the fact that, you know, that's where parking should occur and that. Yeah, yeah. Great question. Um, so the parking area, um, I believe it already is striped. Um, and that is, um, yeah, that'll be I, I definitely a, a good concern to have. 
And it's something that permit compliance staff will um, review during their inspections um, just to ensure that the parking area will be, um, you know, the only place used for parking. Okay. Well, that was my only comment, um, you know, would that be come through? And, and, and then for Nicole, going back to Nicole, the only thing I see as needing us to kind of follow through on is making sure that the, um, that the comments that move forward as far as preliminary and, and so on are those two comments regarding the, um, that first comment in the previous minutes. Could we carry that forward? Yeah, I got it. Perfect. All Hi. right. Am I allowed to just make a comment on that? Uh, sure, just make it really brief. We're kind of burnt out and we haven't had our lunch. <laughs> okay. Um, so there is some striped parking kind of in this area here as well. Um, we intend to, to stripe that in a little bit more detail, um, but these are the designated parking areas that are, are part of the permit itself. So. Um, when you were on site, you probably saw a lot of cars in this general vicinity, and that's because there is parking there. Um, however, it's not striped clearly enough. So that is something that we intend to do throughout the, the permit issuance process. Sure. Uh, the other place you could see it is just up of building P. Uh, all around that. Yeah, right in there. And then around the corner on P on the right hand side uh, as we look at the plan it was just kind of willy-nilly <laughs> it was the wild wild west <laughs> yeah and, and to be frank it, it is a farm and so there's parking. oh i know yeah <laughs> i know people, people just are going to park where they're going to park but i just want to make sure that we've got the um that you know the intention is there and that there's this follow through and so that you know absolutely nobody winds up walking out there and going what do you mean we're supposed to do this <laughs> so. yeah okay I no Thank you. uh i it sounds like uh or at least i'm feeling like we could do with a motion here I'll make a motion for preliminary and final approval. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second it. Thank you, Alan. Um, uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Recuse for Robin Brady. Uh, I was going to get to that. Um, any um, no's? Any abstentions? Okay. All right. So, um, Sounds like a, a plan. Looks like we got everything done today. Um, are we good, Leah? Yep, just need a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you, Alan. All in favor? Aye. 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 Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you.